PBS. Welcome home. The most compelling action is on CBS Sports. Dad, on this Father's Day, Winston Cup race fans have found two drivers sharing the point lead. Daytona winner Jeff Gordon's won five more. He's tied with teammate Texas Terry Labonte. Dale Jarrett's gone fast enough to win twice this season, as has Mark Martin. It's been an up-and-down adventure for Rusty Wallace this year. Ricky Rudd won two weeks ago in Dover. But now we're in Brooklyn, Michigan, with a list of previous winners in this sleepy little town. Looks like a who's who of racing. Yarborough, Baker, Pearson, Allison added to their legend here. Rusty Wallace won a year ago. And while the king has won in Michigan, the young prince at number 24 is 0 for 8 on this track. Is Michigan Speedway his lost world? Could today be the day he finally gets the dinosaur off his back? The Michigan 400, 29th running. On this Father's Day, you couldn't have a more beautiful day for a race. 107,000 sold-out seats, untold thousands in the infield, awaiting the start of this million-and-a-half-dollar race. A million-and-a-half up at stake, and earlier today, Father's Day meant a lot to Ward Burton. He was playground supervisor with Sarah and Jeff. That was just off turn two. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott's here with Chase on Father's Day. And David Green with a new entrant. Diane has Kaylee there. Ricky Rudd and Landon. They're sure liking Dad's Day. And there's a brand new entry, Jesse with Chad Little. It's a two-mile facility over which they're going to be racing, and just one day ago, it bit and bit hard. This man, the six-time winner this year, Jeff Gordon. He was in turn three, 180 miles per hour. Underneath Earnhardt, car breaks loose, slams the wall. It takes out Jeff Burton and Dick Trickle. They all go to reserve cars today. But the big story, Gordon coming in on fire here. He walked away. Not so fortunate was Jeff Burton. They took him to the Foot Memorial Hospital, Jackson. The report is he's okay, no broken bones, and he's going to start that number 99 today. How long can he go? How well can he run? Big question for Jeff Burton, the winner at Texas on CBS earlier this year. With more on the story of these two, let's go trackside. Here's Dick Bergren. Jeff Gordon came to Michigan International Speedway, tied for the points lead, but with that big crash yesterday, he's had to go to a backup car. Rules say that when they start the race, he'll have to go to the back of the field and without many laps to try this car out. Question, Jeff, how is this backup car and how are you? Well, uh, you know, the car's, car's pretty good. It's a real good race car for us. Uh, but we didn't get enough time to, to really adjust on as much as we'd like to. Uh, so we're going to have to work real hard, rely on that pit crew a little bit today. And, and uh, Ray and I are going to have to be communicating real well. As far as myself, you know, my neck's a little bit sore. But for the most part, uh, you know, the, the car held up real well. The seat held up real well. And, uh, you know, thank Lord for, for my safety. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Jeff Burton slowly made his way out to the exit forward and gingerly climbed aboard, suffering from multiple deep soft tissue bruises. Now to help combat that today in the race, he's wearing an electric stimulator, just like this one, which is wired to his ribcage area where the bruises are. Now he will be able to manually adjust the intensity to help alleviate some of the pain. But even when you're 100%, 400 laps here, 400 miles here can be very tough. Jeff, how do you feel and will you be able to go the distance? Well, I should certainly have all intentions of going the distance. Uh, the guys at Human Performance Center, they've done a great job on me, working with me for uh, about three hours now. It's been a lot of time with me, and uh, it's Father's Day. i got to do a good job for my dad. If Jeff is unable to go the distance today, Morgan Shepard will be standing by to fill in for him. Now to the front of the row with the story of the pole winner. Here's Mike Joy. Well, his son's not here. He's off racing. Jason's off running his own car. But Dale Jarrett has won his second pole this year. 
fifth of his career. You won Atlanta from the pole. How about it today? Well, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, I think we've got a good race car here. A lot of people have good race cars. This place is probably the best for competition that there is as far as racetrack goes. And uh, should be an exciting race. We want to take the, a minute just to thank Roger Penske and all his people for the great facility they have and what they did for the families of the drivers and crews and the children especially. Uh, they just kind of set a standard, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. We say happy Father's Day to my dad. We got a good look at that play playground at the top of the show. Well, let's meet NASCAR's newest dad. John Hunter Nemechek was born to Joe and Andrea on Wednesday. And Joe responded with his second front row start of the season outside pole. Happy Father's Day, Dad. How's it feel? Oh, it feels great. You know, I just got to say uh, hello to Andrea and John Hunter, mom and dad back in North Carolina. Uh, I can't say enough for this whole Bell South uh, Coors Light Chevrolet Monte Carlo team. Uh, Tony Glover and heading up all these guys getting me excellent race cars uh, key simmons the engine guys awesome engines and we're just we're starting to click he's not giving out cigars maybe in victory lane let's go high atop michigan international speedway to ken squire thank you mike 43 drivers at the ready we've got our own expert here 50 time winner three time dad six time granddad Ed Jarrett, you got your boy up in front. He's pretty excited about this race. Well, he is, and uh, he's got a great racetrack to race on here. In fact, this racetrack, most of the drivers like it, Ken. It's one of the widest racetracks they race on. It's fast, but if you have your car set up right, you can run on the low groove, you can run in the middle groove, or even you can run on a high groove, depending on the setup of the car and, of course, the gearing that you might have in it. Now, yesterday, during the ARCA race, there was a little bit of a problem up in turn four. Jerry Streeter wrecked his car. It caught fire, slid down the banking a little bit, and Jerry was okay. Fortunately, 17 years old, this young man, he crawled out and walked away. But there was some damage done to the racetrack. So the track officials have come in, made repairs here. Everybody feels that it will be okay, but it's something we'll keep an eye on here today because it is in the group. 12 feet up right there in turn three and four at the apex. Well, let's talk about some of the other athletes who can really pull this one off. Guys like Bobby Labonte, who won both races here in 1995 for Joe Gibbs. Certainly he'll be strong. And how about Jeremy Mayfield? He's been on a hot streak recently. He has two straight top five finishes. Feels very confident running up front with the veterans. Cold, 40, windless races for Earnhardt. My, how he wants to turn that around today. And he's got a real potential for doing it. And one of the sentimental favorites here today is Dave Marcus. He's going for a record. Richard Petty has comp competed in 17,390 miles on this racetrack. All Dave Marcus has to do is run 107 laps here today, and he'll tie that record. Yeah, speed makes the difference, but fuel can make the difference as well. Ask the guys who lost last year to Rusty Wallace. For more on the story of how important fuel is on this track, here's Buddy Baker. Michigan's famous for its four-ride racing down the front straightaway, but that's not always the key to winning at Michigan. The key sometimes is fuel mileage. What you do, if you're running back in a pack and you realize all of a sudden if you don't have the fastest car, you have to devise a way to win. So stretching fuel mileage sometimes can do it for you. So what you do, you stop at 48 laps and check your fuel mileage and you say, hey, we could have went 50 laps. And then you tell your driver, be careful, easy on the throttle. Work it through the corner, draft everything going your way. Let's see what we get on the next stop. Then you go 50 laps, and then you say, well, let's stretch it to 52. That was good. We have an advantage now. If we go green all the way to the end, it can win it for us. Rusty Wallace did this last year, and he did win. Thank you, buddy. All right, let's go trackside. Gentlemen, it's Miller time. Start your engine. CBS coming up the starting grid and the start of the Michigan 400. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Texaco celebrating 10 years of racing excellence with Robert Yates Racing. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. You were so good. <laughs> you were. Well, it was a good piece.
We're back. We're back. They're back. starts to roll off here at the Michigan Speedway, the preliminary laps to the 29th running to the 400. Always a great race, great competition, and you'll be following some of the top cars today from top to bottom. Take a look at the weather here. Perfect day. Temperature in the mid-70s, humidity very low, winds uh, might be picking up a little bit from that 11 miles an hour. Forecast is four clear during the afternoon. Track temperature about 115. In-car temperature as they start, about 90 degrees up to up two. Let's meet some of those top cars who can make the difference in 400 miles. 200 laps of competition. Take a look at the starting order for today's race. Dale Jarrett's on the pole, second time this year for the two-time Michigan winner. And Joe Nemechek alongside. For row two, Ricky Craven, great qualifying run, and Sterling Marlin. In row three, it's Ted Musgrave, and Wally Dollenbach has his best qualifying effort of the year. Row four is Johnny Benson, Jr. from Michigan, and the winner in 95, Bobby Labonte. Going to row five, you have Jeff Burton, the Texas winner, injured yesterday, and Jimmy Spencer. In row six, it's a two-time winner of this event, Mark Martin, and the guy looking to turn it around, 0 for 8 on this track, Jeff Gordon. In row seven, you have Jeff Bodine and Jeff Green. In row eight, it's Jeremy Mayfield, fifth last week at Pocono, rising star with Mike Skidder, leading candidate for rookie honors. Row nine, there you've got Dick Trickle, and with him, Terry Labonte tied for the point lead. Row ten's Rusty Wallace, defending 400 champion, and Ernie Irvin. Row 11, Steve Grissom, and Dale Earnhardt, the two-time winner of the 400. Row 12 is Chad Little and Bobby Hamilton. For row 13, Dave Marcus, and Bill Elliott, the seven-time winner at Michigan. Row 14 is Ward Burton and Billy Standridge. Row 15, David Green and Ken Schrader. Row 16, Rick Wilson and Jerry Nadeau. In the 17th row, Kenny Wallace and Ricky Rudd. Row 18 is Brett Bodine and Lake Speed. For row 19 today, Hot Strickland and Michael Waltrip. In row 20, there you have Kyle Petty and John Andretti. Row 21 is Rick Mast and Derek Cope. And all the way out back, DW, two-time winner here, takes a provisional Winston Cup champion start. And of course, there'll be some cars dropping to the back. Jeff Burton will, has already done that in the car 99 because he had to go to a backup car. So did Jeff Gordon and Ward Burton and Dick Triple. Four cars having to drop back. You see uh, Gordon dropping back there now. Let's talk about those who failed to qualify for today's race. Pretty big, impressive list. Yes, it is. You hate to see anyone have to go home. Ed Barrier, Gary Bradbury, Greg Sachs, Morgan Shepard, and Mike Wallace all failed to qualify. Okay, manufacturers break down. You've got 21 Fords, you've got 14 Chevy, six Pontiacs ready to fight it out here today. And Jeff Gordon has all six Chevy wins so far this year. Here's your race analysis. Wow. 
I'm telling you, 200 laps of very good racing here. Fuel under it, anywhere from 45 to 50 laps. Total first, 1,592,930. Take a look at the end cars for today's race. And let's start right with the top of the field. There's Dale Jarrett with the Quality Care Ford. He'll take you from the pole down into turn one. Getting ready for green, and you'll meet five others a bit later, including Craven, Jeff Burke, Mark Mark Mayfield, Terry Lavati, and Kyle Petty. Pace cars coming in. Get ready to go racing on Father's Day here at the Michigan Speedway. Jarrett brings him in. Qualified on the pole at 183.6. Fifth pole of his career. down the back straightaway. Nemechek pressed to the outside. And Craven puts his foot down with the Chevy, but back on the inside comes Jarrett. Who's going to lead this first lap? Craven has that outside groove. I think that's going to be the one. Yes, he will. Newberg Mays, Richard Craven leads one, and Nemechek pops up on the outside and goes to second. What we're talking about, three wide down the straightaway, two wide through the corner. They'll make it three if they have to. I tell you, this is a great racetrack for these types of cars. They're rocketing around here right now. Ricky Craven has to have confidence right on the top shelf right now. Boy, Ernie Irvin got on the top shelf coming off the turn two, buddy. He was way high in that turn, but got squared away. There you see him right in the middle of the pack. But, uh, okay now. So Craven leads, picks up a car and a half length, a little bit of a break. Back to the fourth place, that green car of Dollenbach at that great qualifying run. The record for this race set a year ago at 166 miles an hour. Wallace did it. There were two cautions for eight laps. There's been a couple of these races that have gone caution free. And another Wallace has had problems here early. Kenny Wallace is already in the pits. I don't know what happened. He was. Uh, about 15 cars from the back of the pack, and really, cars had to scramble to get around as he came in. Look at Michael Waltrip on a tear here with Gordon from the rear, going under Jeff Burton in the 99. Already from 43rd, he is up toward 33rd. Jeff Gordon in the 24. You can see Jeff is really trying to make up a lot of track position right now. It's very important to run as hard as you can right the first of the race. When you make your pit stop, you want to come out with the leaders to keep that track. With more on the Kenny Wallace story, let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Well, Ken, this is something that this team has been dealing with all weekend long, a blown motor. They're looking at it right now, trying to see if they can save it. They're about to push Kenny Wallace back behind the wall. This is the third motor this weekend they have blown up. The motors that they get come from Robert Yates. We'll have to see if we have to keep our eyes on the 28 and the 88 if they'll suffer the same kind of problems today. Ricky Craven stays out in front with a Rick Hendrick Chevrolet, but Musgrave is the man of the moment. He is flying. Ted Musgrave, one of the Roush Fords, and look at Earnhardt in number three, peeling down to the bottom on the banking and going beneath the two-time Daytona 500 champion Sterling Marlin. Moving up into 11th place, Earnhardt is. That's an answer for all you people that want to know. Is Earnhardt still trying? He is definitely trying. He has the number three really hooked up today. He pulled five car lengths on Sterling Marlin. If you remember last year, Sterling Marlin was the car to beat all the way down to the very checkered play. Here's Craven out in front as we complete. Lap five. Five down and Ricky Craven, who has a lot to prove that terrible crash in Texas in practice. Banged up the shoulder. There goes Musgrave going beneath him. It's a Roush Ford down to the bottom. Hendrick Chevy on the outside as they wheel down that back. 2,200 feet long. Pinch him a little going into number three. Great shot here. Those lenses take you right down onto that racetrack as they fight their way into three. It's a little tight there as opposed to turn one wide open. Musgrave out in front. Nemechek still in third, and wheeling up on the outside, it's Bobby Labonte. Both occasions when they ran here at Michigan tonight.
Matty five. He's up to fourth. Dolan back, back to fifth. And Jerick, the pole sitter in sixth, and sliding back. Let's go to Dick Berger. Ricky Craven has never won a Winston Cup race in his career, but he said that at Darlington this spring, he had entered that event thinking for the first time ever he had a legitimate shot to win. He was crashed out of that race while running strongly, a crash that he had nothing to do with and just no place to go. But he said just before the start of this race today, I'm starting to think this is going to be the first one that I could really win. They have a lot of confidence in driver and car in that team. Right now, there's a pretty good dice developing between the car of Earnhardt and Mark Martin. They're back there at eighth, ninth, fighting it out. Mark Martin was up in seventh place at the end. He got down on the inside. He still, that's the white car. You see coming right in there. Mark Martin, now he gets back or tries to get back up in line, but he lost about six positions while trying to get back up in line. The outside groove seems to be the better place to go right now. And Earnhardt from 22nd up into eight and seven laps and here he comes after Jimmy Spencer around they come out of turn four and down the straightaway hey he's fine that's the 99 car well, that looks like there's some smoke off that car for a moment Burton right there what Earnhardt needs right now is to oh, oh he's in trouble there goes Mike Skinner into the outside wall in turn two Similar situation to what happened to Jeff Gordon in practice yesterday. He got down there and the car got loose with his own fire. Working lap nine as they come back to the line. Hard hit for Skinner. And he's been fighting that car all week. He said it was extremely loose. A real handful. And you can see him break away. Here he is out running away from number 31. Destroyed. And That's give a call to those firemen, Cam. Boy, they were there right on top of that situation just seconds before they got there. So Mike Skinner's misfortunes continue here in his 29th Winston Cup start. He's away. Helmet off. Hard ride down into the corner. Had started in 16th position. He's out motioning towards somebody. I don't think he's happy at all with Bodine with Jeff Bodine in the seven, pointing at him as he came by. The top rookie, Mike Skinner, out of Susanville, California, loses the 31 big time. He was right in the middle of the pack, or up towards the front of the pack, actually, and uh, was fortunate no other cars were involved. 1995 Craftsman Truck Champion. Take a look at what happens here. Okay, here is the 31 car of Skinner. There's the 7 car of Jeff Bodine. And it looks like Skinner goes up, and I'm sure he feels that maybe the 7 car of Bodine came down a little bit. But once that car broke loose, there was no saving it. Backs it hard into the outside wall, and you see how many cars go by down on the inside as the car stays up there and slides on the upper groove before it starts coming down. And that allowed most of the race cars to go by before he comes down. Well, what happened there is that the... Uh fuel cell is really pulled apart as it hits the wall right here and you see him coming across the racetrack Mike Skinner's car is coming down no fire there it's working so far now it starts to light up as the uh, sparks start running up the back of the car and, and set the fire off it's still another angle here I think when Skinner sees the replays of this he realizes that Bodine held his line going in the corner he did not pull down and this is Skinner pointing to Bodine, unhappy. And perhaps not after he sees the replay. He was running in ninth position when it broke away in turn two and slapped the wall. First caution. So we're working lap 12 at the present time. Mike Skinner, the first victim of this Michigan 400. More in a moment.
Yes, sir. at Michigan. Let's go quickly to Dick Bergman. Bill Ellie, the seven-time winner here at Michigan, has just made the second of two pit stops to repair damage to the left front. He was involved in that interaction. He has taken four tires in fuel, as has Jeff Burton. Let's go to Mike Joy. Uh, Dick, no pit stops down here at the south end, but a lot of strategy here. Jared talking about track bar adjustments and other drivers discussing the merits of push versus lose. I think it'll be about 48 laps, certainly less than 50, before we see the first pit stops from the cars running up front. A little later in the race, they may stretch that past the 50-lap mark under green conditions. But certainly between now and 50 laps, we'll see visits here to pit road. Kemp? For sure, 48 to 52, the window, and you saw Skinner with that rear clip on that car completely destroyed, big fire out of it, immediately extinguished by the great crews they have here in Michigan. He's been taken, he Skinner, to the infield care center at the track, but we saw him walk away and looked pretty heated as he walked away. Uh, Jeff Burton is pitting once again. It's like his second or third time on pit road under this caution period. Let's take a look at the in cars today. You're riding with Dale Jarrett. He's currently in fifth spot with the Quality Care Ford Credit number 88. Ricky Craven is in second behind Musgrave. There you see Musgrave just in front of him, that number 25 car, which is the Budweiser Chevrolet. The 99 car is on pit road. It was back in 40th position. Jeff Burton injured yesterday, still trying to give it a go. Here's Mark Martin. He's running in 10th position currently with the number six, the Valvoline Ford. And Jeremy Mayfield, he's in 17th position right now. That Econolodge camera inside of Jeremy Mayfield's number 37 Ford. We've got Terry Labonte, as always, right up there. He's in 12th, carrying the Kellogg's car. He's got the Tiger on his hood for the first time. He says it's running great. Here's Kyle Petty, the Hot Wheels car, number 44. And Kyle fighting that one. He's back at 33rd position hoping to get that car together. But again, the handling problems have been bothering him. He was in talking to his dad yesterday for about 20 minutes about springs and shocks and how to get that car to stick in the corner. One lap, and we're going to go racing. That means at lap 14, we will be back under green. Here's Dick Burton. Jeff Burton has made several pit stops. The problem is not with the car. The problem is with driver comfort. They are trying to set that seat up for him so that he can last the race. If he can't, Morgan Shepard, who is standing by, has got the right uniform on, and he is ready to jump into that race car. Burton, however, hopes to go all day. There's Jeff Burton. Yeah, and Ward Burton had front end damage, and it came when he ran in the back of Dave Marcus and gave the uh, nose of the car in. Well, I'll tell you, for those Burton brothers, there you see Jeff Burton right now. Those Burton brothers, Friday the 13th came a day in late for these two. Friday the 13th struck them both on Saturday. Ward Burton wiped out his car in a practice run in the happy hour. Jeff Burton in that early morning crash, getting his machine destroyed, going to a backup car. And the caution is going to remain for another lap. So we're not going to see Green Fly this time by. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 continues after this message and a word from your local station.
<laughs> you got the job. <laughs> Say again, please. Yes, sir. How much time away? Car lengths as they hit the back straightaway over Craven. Dahlen back is six. Earnhardt is up to seven. He is coming from that 22nd starting position. Dale Earnhardt on a roll. Jimmy Spencer moving up. And Gordon is fighting his way from the back of the pack. He started here in 26, coming after Cope for 25th right now. Ralph Shaheen standing by on pit road with Mike Skinner. Well, Mike has just climbed out of the infield care center. Mike, we saw you pointing at one of the drivers out of the track. What happened, and what's it all about? Well, uh, apparently one of the other guys thought that uh, we were racing the last lap. And pinched me up, about got me in the wall over there on the back stretch a couple of laps prior to that, and I had a good run on him and turned under him under there, and he just kept on coming and coming and coming. I kept going until I got down the bottom, and I think he clipped the side of the car there and got it sideways and whatever got sideways and uh, just took us out off early. It was kind of a move that we might have expected the guy to make with five laps to go, not to five laps. And the guy he's talking about is Jeff Bodine in the number seven Ford. You saw him out there pointing to Bodine as Bodine came by a lap after he turned that number 31 to scrap. We didn't know about the things that had happened the lap before last laps before. But Musgrave, Raven, Nemechek, one, two, three, and Gordon rolling from the back of the field is now up to 23rd. Meanwhile, the number three car is to seventh. Here's Earnhardt, and he is closing quickly, coming up on Dale Jarrett in the 88. Earnhardt moved to sixth a lap ago, and now he's moving up on Jarrett, who is running in fifth place. They dispatch the Dahlen back. Look at Earnhardt coming in. Meanwhile, from the quality care, Dale Jarrett viewpoint. The look of Earnhardt. You see Earnhardt just behind Dale Jarrett. He's looking to the outside. This car is really hooked up the center part of the corner. If he passes Dale Jarrett on the outside, though, he's earned his money. Now you see him looking to the inside now as they head down the back straightaway. Take a look at that. Hutch Strickland's picked up 18 spots for the Stavola brothers. And Zingo! Wow! Earnhardt! Boy, he snapped that one through. He almost got snapped Jeff it right back. He got sideways there, getting in the corner. He drove extremely hard in and got way up in the marble there. He's got it back now. Earnhardt coming by in fifth, seeking Bobby Labonte, the number 18, just in front of him. Dale Jarrett now back in sixth position, the pole sitter. Incidentally, that 183, nowhere near the record of 186. You can blame that all on a hot day. It was really warm out here. Nobody got the kind of laps they wanted. The Saturday qualifying, the second day qualifying, they had 24 more horsepower under there just because it was cooler. Easier day to run these engines. Here's Earnhardt in the number three, closing up on Bobby Labonte. There you see the interval from first to second to third to fourth to fifth. The black number three of the Jeff Gordon is on his hair right now. He's already up in the 19th spot. Very uh, 42nd spot. Good battle in front. Musgrave, again, Craven coming up to close on him with that number 25 back straight away, 2,200 feet long. And here's that turn number three. Well, you do pinch it down a little to get in there. You have to go right down on the bottom part. As you can see, they're running actually in the center part of the racetrack. And uh, the reason they're doing that is that when they first repaved the racetrack, you couldn't go up there. Now you have a lot of room that you use that higher room the RPM stuff, but we don't have to accelerate up out of the corner. They do have to decelerate going into the corners here. Just a little bit. They don't back off a lot. Even though the banking is not very steep here, not compared to Daytona or Talladega. 
It's a very fast racetrack. Over 200 miles an hour down the front straight away. Well, it's 18 degree banking here in Daytona, 32 degrees, so it's just about half. Even. But uh, as far as getting in the corner, you see the cars get great traction. Following uh, Mark Martin as he tries to go underneath seventh place Jimmy Spencer. And Mark picks it up a notch. Mark had dropped back to 10th position there, got shuffled back down on the inside there a little bit earlier in the race, but now coming back, picking them off one at a time. Up to about 200 miles an hour as he eases it into turn number one. It's live here on CBS on this Dad's Day. Hope you're enjoying 29th running of this Michigan 400. Signal behind him to Spencer, who he had just passed. He wants him to stay in line to see if they can't hitch up and go. Look at Earnhardt moving up on Bobby Labonte. And Bobby Labonte's right on the back bumper of Joe Nemechek in the blue and white Chevrolet. Here they come at you. Musgrave, Craven, then Nemechek, Labonte, and Earnhardt. Earnhardt and fifth behind the green car with Bobby Labonte. That's how they're deployed. They've added about 15,000 seats this year to bring them to 107,000. They've been sold out for months, and for good reason. Such a good facility. And a track in its likeness opens next week out in California, Montana. And it's sold out to As they get some folks to get here, for sure. Seats, Winston Cup racing, they're at a premium. Well, this is the largest infield crowd they've ever had here. They've rearranged and organized it really and marked it off and have reserved spots in the infield. So they didn't roughly be closing in on Bobby Labonte. He seems for the moment to be willing to stay there. So he's 25 laps this time by. 175 remaining. Ted Musgrave, who's never won a Winston Cup race, stays in front. Now, pressure being exerted by Mark Martin in the number six on the number 88. And Ernie Urban is moving up very fast back there also. He's moved from 20th all the way up to 8th spot right now. Ernie Urban is going through this traffic very, very well this early in the race. Here's Labonte in the green car trying to make a move on Nemechek coming off turn four. If he could get enough momentum to go on And Jeff Gordon, he's up to 18th. He just went by Chad Logan, Lake Speed. Line. Run by. Mark Martin just slices down to the inside. He's up to six. Jarrett falls to seven. Bill Elliott is up to 22nd after he hit him. He was in and in again. Started 36 after that first caution. Look at Jeff Gordon. Continuing to knock him off. Here's Brent Bodine in the 11. Gone. Give it to Gordon. He's up to 17. It's been nothing but kisses and hisses for him at every introduction. This was a similar day today. 100,000 people. They have an opinion. It reminds me of the days of Waltrip when he was up there. Kaylee Arvin. They never treated Ned Jarrett like that. No way. Gentlemen, Ned. I'll tell you what, I've got a couple of them myself. And I'll, I'll give you some. One thing. The only real bad thing to hear is silence. The <laughs> that is a, that's the kiss of death as far as the race program is concerned. Never happened with Earnhardt. Musgrave stays first. There you see him. And he stretches now. His advantage is about four tenths of a second. And about uh, five, six car lengths. Back to the red. Number 25. Great there. Nemechek having a great run. But look at Earnhardt. Earnhardt from 22nd position. Continuing to close him down. He has disposed of Bobby Labonte. Bernard has now moved up to fourth. But Musgrave having a great run. His board just zipping around here and handling very well for him. This was the race. This was the one year that Richard Baker was supposed to try. He lost his life the night before, and Musgrave got the ride. The rest is history. Got himself into Winston Cup racing. Killed at Salem Speedway. Right now, Musgrave for Jack Rouse is having his best ride, staying in front. Let's go to Mike Joy. Again, it's a bright, sunny day, but there's a black shadow advancing on this field. Larry McReynolds with Dale Earnhardt's crew chief. Larry, he's come up really in a hurry. You've got a good package to start with here. I really couldn't hear what you said, but, you know, just comment about the car. We made a few changes this morning. We was pretty good yesterday afternoon, but just needed a little something extra. Dale and I talked about it last night, a little bit more this morning. 
made some changes, and uh, again, I, it's we, we've had such bad luck this year. I'm not going to get too excited. Got a long way to go, but it's it's good to see that Monte Carlo headed toward the front anyhow. To Rob Shaheen. Shaheen. Mike, one of those changes they made was they took a half inch out of the wide front nose of the Monte Carlo on both sides of the car. They just narrowed it up. They pulled it out and layered it up, pulling this in a half inch on both sides. Larry McReynolds told me that was good for at least three tenths of a second on the number three. Again. And the number three is rocking and rolling right now. From 22nd into third goes Earnhardt. 40 races since he's won. Only one top five this season. Tenth a week ago at Pocono. But right now, look at him fly. Look at Mark Martin coming up on the inside there, trying to move in right with Earnhardt. If they get hooked up, they can run the leaders down. But right now, everybody's kind of single file. It's really hard to pass cars when they draft here. Very much like Daytona or Talladega. You need to stay in the uh, directly behind the car, but you can see Mark Martin handling very much uh, better than uh, Joe Nemechek if he passes through there. Not wanting to mix it up in the early going, staying single file as much as they can here. That hand signal was to thank him early in the race, the give and take sport, and uh, you thank a guy like that. Later on, if he's running better, you'll let him do the same thing to you. Ward Burton going down the lap. He with a rumpled nose after an altercation with Dave Marcus early in the going. Musgrave, the surprise in front. Craven staying in second. But look out. Here comes the man in black. Craven fixing to check out. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco. Be better. <laughs> Mark Martin has come eight out of the There he goes by Bobby. I'm going to tell you what, uh, the fastest car out there is Ernie Irvin. He is going like a rocket yep. ship. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco, celebrating 10 years of racing excellence with Robert Yates Racing. After 32 of the 200 laps have been completed, a couple of leaders, Musgrave has dominated most recently. Only two lead changes in the speed at 134 miles an hour after we had a caution for six laps in the early going. And two drivers have had to retire. Kenny Wallace is out of the race. His engine went away right at the beginning. And Mike Skinner, big crash in turn number one that created that caution period. The story up in front is a poor Chevy story. Musgrave leading with Ricky Craven in second. And there you see the interval between them. Craven seems willing to just stay there, stabilizing this race. Line five, car lengths back from Musgrave. Mark Martin has wheeled into third, and Earnhardt is now relegated to fourth. Bobby Labonte in fifth, and Ernie Irvin, a man on a mission, he's up to six spot. He's up to six, and he has a race car that is able to pass on the high side or low side, so look for Ernie Irvin to go right to the front. From 20th position, 
Uh, the car with the star he is back, looking like a meteor as it flits around this two-mile facility. Live on CBS today, the Michigan 400. There you see Bobby Labonte just in front of him in fifth. I don't think he's going to hold that Robert Gates engine off for too long out there, Ned. He is. But he said he can go anywhere on the racetrack that he wants to go, and certainly he has the horsepower, the hood of that 28. So he is steadily coming through traffic, has been gaining on Musgrove. A lot of rumors about him and that he might be out of the Yates team. To some degree, Robert Yates talked about it. They may have been dispelled this week, but there were all kinds of talk. Remember back in April that Urban and Sterling Marlin were going to swap rides, and that, that still is brewing a little. It's the time of the year when rumors are going through. Well, Musgrave, Craven, take a look at this down to the inside. Great move there in that battle to third. That was Mark Martin getting up under Earnhardt, but Earnhardt's fighting back down the back straightaway. You can see right now it looks like a, it looks like the six car may be a little quicker in the corner. You can see Earnhardt has good uh, getting in the corner. Now watch Mark come back in the center part of the corner and, and get right up the side of him as they head off the corner. Off turn four. For third spot. Even across. And as they run like this, big opportunity for Urban to close ground, and indeed he's done it. He's right up behind them now. Outside is the move. Okay, he goes, decides to go with Earnhardt, but he got in a little bit hard, and his car slipped up, and here comes Mark Martin trying to get back on the inside. Earnhardt was the one that, that uh, came out the best in that corner of the three. Steve Grissom, number 41, on pit road, unscheduled stop for Grissom. Look at Earnhardt fade up the track inside, wide open for Martin. Okay, what's happening to Earnhardt right now? He's driving in very, very hard. He gets the nose and car pushing out towards the outside of the racetrack. They're much quicker in the center part of the corner. Eventually, they'll get by Earnhardt the way he's running right now. This is all for third spot. Ernie Irvin from 20th in that number 28. Ready to get out here for that position. Bobby Labonte mixes it up. There's Urban down to the inside on Earnhardt. Back straight away. Just pulled right on by. Whoa. Not much he can do about it. He hopes that Urban slide up and drive back under him. But let's see if that happens. Earnhardt move back to the inside. Earnhardt is trying to get this car to work on the bottom because when he goes up on the high side, you've heard us talk about on another broadcast, arrow push. That's what he has. When he goes in the corner, the front of the car tries to go up the racetrack. And the, one that's turn, the only way to stop it is back out of the car. So he backed out right then and let Irvin have the spot. You know, we saw Bill Elliott making all those pit stops during that caution. Guys, he's on the move, too. He's moved all the way up to 15th position. He makes that 14th now. So Bill Elliott's on the move. Musgrave, Craven, Martin, one, two, three. This is fourth spot being contested. Ernie Irvin, the number 28 there. Earnhardt just behind him. Lies fifth, and then Bobby Labonte. That green car in sixth the Pontiac. Joe Gibbs racing. Mike Joy. Ernie Irvin has said his car is a little loose off the corner, Ken. And just a little loose coming off, and he's especially concerned about when traffic is up and underneath him because that makes the car looser. Now, Ted Musgrave up in the lead and said that feels like the track is very, very slick. Nobody else has much complained about that, uh, but the car is difficult to drive, especially in traffic. So aerodynamics management uh, with cars around is really becoming a key here today. Dick Bergeron. And aero indeed is a big story here today, Mike. While most of the drivers, including Ernie Irvin, have opted for the most aerodynamic downforce they can possibly get, Mark Martin, who has gone from 11th up into third, has not. He is handling so well that they were able to knock a pad of spoiler back on that car. Remember the race in Texas? The car that was running so well, that number six that was in the lead until it blew up. This car, this is a handling fast race car. Meanwhile, Steve Grissom behind pit wall, working on the ignition system. The engine is silent. Pit. Riding with Mark Barton in that third spot. Sliding around here now. There you see Grissom's number 41. Gadsden, Alabama driver. Hoping to get back out here and score some points. Trying to score right now, big time, is this man, Ted Musgrave, who has never won a Winston Cup race. 
He came very close in this track. One of his first breakthrough performances was a race he led until late and finished fourth about six years ago. Right now, it's all his. He came very close to winning at Darlington, too, in the spring race back in March. Uh, Dale Jarrett just beat him by about a half a car length. Boy, look at Mark Martin come after Ricky Craven for second spot. Ricky Craven's beginning to fade just a little bit. Mark Martin is handling. Watch him go right down on the white line, getting in the corner here. You see Craven's car starting to edge, edge up towards the outside of the racetrack. Martin much quicker through the middle part of the corner. Third race this year that Ted Musgrave has led. The others were Talladega and Tiffany. 14 lap 45 is your leader, Musgrave, Craven, Martin, the leaders, the top three. We continue to see a great struggle here. And again, another Roush Ford pulling up. The Roush team beginning to show some real strength with Musgrave and Martin. And by the way, the Labonte brothers are running back to back in sixth and seventh position, Bobby and Terry respectively. There's Martin now on his way into second place by a couple of car lengths. And we'll have pit stops coming up here before too long, Ken. I think in the next uh, four or five laps, excepting uh, the dozen or so cars that hit it during the caution. Mike Joy. And Ken, one of the first in will be the leader, Ted Musgrave. They're going to go a little short on this stop. Lap 47, take no chances, get fresh tires, and see how it changes. So Musgrave is due in here shortly. And Earnhardt is on pit road. Earnhardt, first of the heavy hitters. And they've never been known for fuel mileage to be fuel mileage king so he didn't want to run out out there so they come in change the tires and the tank of fuel that'll pretty much dictate what the rest of the leaders will do too you don't want Earnhardt out there on fresh tire, tires running much faster Mike going to be a standard four tire change for Dale Earnhardt and a fill up of fuel they don't want to make a two tire change because it only costs them five seconds more and they put a set of tires on the car that are mess instead of putting on two on the right side and wondering what the lefts have done so I think all of these again will be four tire changes Mark Martin is addressing pit road now his crew ready for him let's see how well they'll service car number six for Mark Martin Mike the grill for Mark Martin, the right side tires going on. Looks like they're also coming around to the left. Usually when someone like Earnhardt sets the stage, everybody else will come around and do likewise, but no! Jack Roush pulls a different car out of the tech and goes with right side tires and sends Mark back out. Musgrave, leader on pit road. Ted Musgrave coming in. And Ernie Urban following him right down pit road. 55 miles an hour, the speed limit on pit road. Lap 47 as these cars come out of pit road. Dale Jarrett in this pit road now. Several of the lead cars are Johnny, coming in. Johnny Benson comes in. Jeremy Mayfield making his pit stop. Pit road's the place to be as they work lap 48. Mike? Ricky Thomas and Luke Schiff change the right side tires. Tony Martin has Ted Musgrave's car up in the air. Rick Matinsky's done with that first can of gas. Here comes the second can from Craig Phillips around to the left side. And again, very routine stop. A toss of the water bottle from Musgrave. As soon as that jack drops, he's gone in a flash. Craven comes by, leading with Terry Labonte in second. They stay on the track. Meanwhile, Terry Labonte, who had moved up into third position, he brings the number five on the pit road, followed by Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Spencer, and Rusty Wallace. Working lap 49 as they're making these pit stops. Schrader comes in, Hamilton. Hope is on pit road. Dick Bergren. See, Wallace is on pit road right now, and on the way in, he struck one of the members of Terry Labonte's crew who went limping. He is still working on the car. Rusty has opted for a four-tire change. Part of their plan today, part of their strategy, the driver is supposed to get the fuel mileage. They're counting on Rusty to do it. A nice stop. Beautiful stop for Wallace, three-time winner of this race. Of course, his car owner owns this track, Roger Penske. Bought it back in 1973, and my, how it's grown. It has worked. Here's Earnhardt working underneath Bobby Labonte, and here's Jeff Gordon coming on to pit road. With these pit stops, he had bounced right up in the standings, but now get them all back to their positions following this green flag stop. Coming to lap 50, next time by 150 laps to go, and Craven appears ready to come on pit road. He's coming down right now, Ken. This should hand the lead to Bobby Labonte. Indeed it does. It should put Elliott 
Bill Elliott up to second. You were talking about how well he has done since he made, what, five pit stops? Yeah, and he has to have to stop for another 10 laps or so because he has uh, a lot of fuel that they didn't have, so he'll, he'll stay out there and lead for a while. Mike? Ricky Craven making the long run down pit road. He's getting right side tires and fuel. He's parked way out from the pit wall. That's usually the sign of a four tire change, and that's just what they're doing. And Dave Benning brings that jack around, and Shane Parcell and Kevin Gilman change those left side tires. Craven getting finished up here and going back out. Shoulder and rib injury. Boy, Bobby Labonte getting great fuel mileage on his Pontiac. He won one of the races he run, won here in 1995 was by fuel mileage. He won the other one by just simply outrunning them. There's Somebody a left a piece of tire, tire yeah. out there on the racetrack. Throw well, something down on the grass. And here's Ernie Irvin trying to get back in the lead lap after he made his pit stop. He's a lap down. So all of those that have made pit stops are anxious for Bobby Labonte to go ahead and come into the pits so they can cycle back and get back on the lead lap. See He's Ricky Craven doing the same thing there. So Bobby Labonte has the lead. He's on the pit road. This will put them all back together when we return. Today's aerial shots are being provided by the Bud One Airship, which reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. There's the old rig up there getting some shots today. Pretty dramatic stuff of this two-mile racing facility that's never looked grander. And here you see after 54 of 200 laps have been completed, getting us up to uh, 108 miles today. Bill Elliott is out in front. Great run by him from the rear. Elliott is the leader with Mark Martin in second and Michael Waltrip in third trying to get a lap back here is Jeff Gordon. Let's go to Ralph Cheney. Ken, the valve core in the inner liner on the left rear tire of Kenny Schrader's car blew out, blowing the air out of the inner liner, which blew out the outer layer of the tire, causing a major problem for Kenny Schrader. They have brought the scroll machine down, put new tires on it, and he is back out on the racetrack. To Dick Berger. I'll take you on the crew member in Terry Labonte's pit that was hit by Rusty Wallace. It was Slugger Labby. He is okay. He's favoring his right foot just a little bit, but they're more worried about the race car and dealing with tape to try to fix it up in case they have problems with that front end. Ken? Riding with Terry Labonte in the number five. He's working his way back up through the field after these pit stops. 
That's not a cannon there on the right hand side. Yeah. That fresh air coming in the uh, right window there and blowing on the driver to keep him a little fresher. It's very warm here today, so I know that's a help. And he is well back in these standings, being shown 30th at the present time. Terry Labonte. And there you see Elliott out in front. And Ken, right behind him is Jeff Gordon, who is a lap down now. He's trying to get back in the lead lap. Elliott can still go another eight or ten laps before he has to pit. And now Gordon gets by. Well, Gordon, <laughs> Elliott is now coming into the pits. He's not going to run quite as far as we thought he would. He pitted on lap 14. Michael Waltrip in the pits and the sit-go for it. Kyle Petty is in. All of those drivers have made pit stops on that caution around laps 12 to 14. Rick Nast has also come in here for a pit stop. You see Bill Elliott. Ralph? Ken, they go to work on Bill Elliott's McDonald's number 94. The crew putting in fuel, and they're making a chassis adjustment. It looks like they'll take just two tires, and he'll get back out. Some great pictures of that pit stop on Bill Elliott. He's had so much success. He has won this 400-miler four times. You can see some repair work they did from an uh, incident earlier when Bill Elliott had a contact with another car and he made a piece of fender and put it on there. Certainly did not hurt the way the car is before. Number four, Sterling Marlin being shown up in front at 99. Jeff Burton gets a shot at it now. Bill Elliott in the 99, falling back in the 94, and Jeff Burton in the 99 comes up into the second position. There's that number four. Got some tire marks down the door there, Ned. Running close out there with somebody running close right now. Ricky Rudd in the 10 car trying to move on the inside. There's a Ford on the inside, Chevrolet on the outside. Michael Walter right in front of them. Ricky Rudd trying to get back on the lead lap. That's what he just did. Rudd being shown in the 27th position, but he's made his pit stop, so he got back to the lead lap. And here comes Marlon now. He's going to come into the pits. He was one of those that stopped during that caution period. So he's picked up himself up five bonus points for you fans that might be new to Winston Cup racing. Any driver who leads a lap during the race gets five bonus Winston Cup points. And the driver who leads the most laps gets another five bonus points. 175 the number of points you can pick up for winning one of these things. With a five point increment back over the what, top six or seven positions. Back with Bobby Labonte in that number five. He's oh, trying to make it oh, and Terry Labonte. Oh, hey, tied for the points lead coming into this race. Higher Debris higher. on the racetrack. You can see the metal flying there as he started off turn two and down the back straightaway. Chewed up that right front fender. Caution Yellow is out. out. Second caution of the day for Texas Terry. New paint job on his car for this race. He's had two other new paint jobs in the last two years. He won both of those races. This is going to hurt his chances of winning today. Co-leader with Jeff Gordon in point battle, both off that Rick Hendrick team. Yellow is out, and it is out at lap 50. A quarter of the distance, caution down. That means that Jeff Burton in the 99 with these pit stops has the south front spot. Rick Wilson is in second. Mark Martin is in third. Darrell Walter in fourth. And this is created because some of these cars have yet to take in fuel. They came in about a dozen of them in that first caution period when Mike Skinner crashed in turn number two hard. We'll take a quick commercial break and reset the field for you here on this Father's Day in the 29th running of the Michigan 400. I think we wanted to say the same yeah, thing. He's going to do a lot of damage to that race car. He, he stayed out. He, he started in the pits. Now this, as far as that gas mileage, if it goes green the rest of the way, this negates all of that now yeah. because they've run enough laps here yeah. to, that puts everybody back on the same, the same spot. He went on around racetrack. See those marks out through the grass there, buddy? He started on pit road and then he came back out. And, and so he went around. That's why I say he's going to do a lot of damage to that yeah. front end. Here he is just coming in. See, he's up there now in four. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, he got in the wall. Yeah. Ow. 
I guarantee you that was a flat tire when he got there. Yeah. He's cutting that tire somewhere. Man, that's that almost hurt. You know though, this is way it this is let's see, where are we at here on the Thank you. He's coming down Pit Road. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking he's about turning in. He's going to the garage. He's gone right back to the garage. Five is into the garage. Well, they must have. We'll let that bit of speculate. I know he cut a tire. You see the wheel was cut and it was going right on. Thank you. After the race, stay on the fast track with CBS Sportsline. You find in-car video, special cover story featuring Jeff Gordon and how he's making out and all these drivers up in front. The story on Jeff Burton and Mark Martin and Ricky Craven. The Winston Cup standings, video highlights, video highlights, that's right. Plus the Sportsline newsroom will have a complete race wrap-up. Now it's all at cbs.sportsline.com. That's cbs.sportsline.com. Dot com right after today's event. Say, coming up next on the CBS Sports Show, the USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships continue from Indianapolis. Olympic gold medalists, that'll be Derek Atkins and Jackie Joyner Kersey are among the stars competing. And then on the Budweiser Boxing Series, hard hitting heavyweight, Joe, the boss, hip record 38 and 4 looks to add to his knockout string. He takes on Ross Purity. That's coming up next on CBS Sports. Terry Labonte had himself problems, big time problems. How big? Ride with him. But as you can see right there, he goes, whoa, man. It looked like he cut a tire because it went up. You could see he had his uh, steering wheel turned and it was going right into the wall there. And he started to come into the pits, buddy, after the caution came out. And apparently his crew said, no, 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 go on. The caution's out. Try to make another lap. So he comes across the grass and back out onto the racetrack, but now has pulled it into the garage area. Ralph Shaheen. Well, Ken, Terry Labonte is still sitting behind the wheel of his car. The car is up on jack stands. He is not in a mood to talk right now. He is very upset with the situation. Of course, this affecting the point standings to Dick Bergman. Well, Jeff Burton has been in and taken four tires on. He's had quite a bit of conversation with his crew about his well-being. He says, I'm maybe not running this car as fast as I possibly could, but I'm going to hang in there. Morgan Shepard looking at tires, wishes he could get out, but he can't because Burton's staying behind the wheel. Mike Joy. Nick, all the leaders that 10 laps ago got four tires came in here and got two right side tires, except Jeff Bodine, he took on four. Now, Mark Martin got only right side tires under green, so he came in here and got only left. Dale Jarrett raised the track bar and took a round of bite out of car number 88. Rusty Wallace put a round of bite into his number two Ford. And Dale Earnhardt's crew chief, Larry McReynolds, assessed the damage on the right front corner and said they'll put a patch over that uh, missing piece between the fiberglass nose piece and the steel fender next time they come in. Steve Grissom's car still sits here behind the wall. They have some sort of ignition problem where the car will not fire on more than four cylinders at a time. They've replaced the entire ignition box and module. Now they're thinking it may be something in the wiring or something internal as they have the distributor apart under the hood. Ken Squire. 55th lap being completed. You're riding with Kyle Petty. Kyle is currently being shown 31st on the field in the Hot Wheels car. Kyle Petty get his day together. He's one lap down at the present. We're see, seeing 28 cars on the lead lap. CBS Sports coverage, Michigan 400 continues after this message and a word from your local station.
CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Budweiser. The CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Budweiser, the classic American lager. The more than 1,575 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by AT&T, it's all within your reach. Coming back to green here at Michigan in the 400. Just taking green, you have Rusty Wallace in that number two car as your leader. Yeah, Dick Trickle right in front of him. I said there were 28 cars on the lead lap. Dick Trickle is in 28th position, almost a lap down. In fact, right now, Rusty Wallace is going to put Dick a lap down to Junior Don Levy's Ford number nine. Bobby Labonte rides in second. Mark Martin in third. Jeremy Mayfield is in fourth. Ooh, Trickle coming back up on the outside. He said, I'm not ready to give up yet. You see Kenny Schrader there. We documented just a little while ago. He had tire trouble. He's trying to get back to lap right now. He's two laps down, buddy. And he gets one of those back right now if he can get a caution. There's Junie Don Levy. His car, number 90, with Dick Trickle aboard. Lost one yesterday. This is his 750th start. For over 50 years, been building cars out of Richmond, Virginia. No one more respected or well-liked than Judy Don Levy and no one to whom people like Ken Schrader and Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd owe a greater thanks. He's brought so much talent along. In Here comes Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. That's the green car just behind Rusty Wallace. You see, trying to get under him if they come off turn four. Here's Bobby Labonte in that green machine down on the bottom, trying to mow down that Rusty Wallace number two. He's going for a fourth win. In this Michigan 400, Bobby Labonte tucks back in now, right in front of Mark Martin, or Mark Martin just beneath him, somebody, taking the spot. Somebody must have made Mark Martin mad this morning. Boy, <laughs> he's driving the wheels off Whoa. his number six cars. You see him trying to take the lead right now. I think he'll be the quickest car on the speedway. Last August here in, in the race, there are two races here at the Michigan Speedway each year for the Winston Cup car, but Mark Martin absolutely dominated that race all day long. He lost it right at the end to Dale Jarrett, but he, he always has good cars. Look at him trying to make those moves. And on the inside. Started 11th today, and Mark Martin. He really has the win. And that gives you some idea of that speed down the main straightaway. Right up at the front, 200 miles an hour as they hit that first turn. You know, just as I was talking about Mark Martin, he dropped off the pace just a little bit on the inside there. His car may be a little loose, or whether what seems to be wrong, but he dropped back about four spots. That position of Mark Martin in fourth with Wallace, Bobby Labonte, and Mayfield one, two, three. Here's Ralph Shaheen. Ken, to update on the situation with Jerry Labonte, he absolutely refuses to talk to any member of the media right now. The crew is feverishly working on the number five car. Apparently, he ran over some piece of debris out on the racetrack, was cut down a tire. They were trying to hold out until a yellow. The tire finally let go, and you saw what happened from there. The damage to the right front of the car is extensive. The crew has enough on jack stands, and they're going to be in here for quite a few laps, comparing it to Dick Bergeron. Well, we've been watching the 18 of Bobby Labonte motor his way through this field today. 
he has won here twice at Michigan. 95, he cleaned house, won both of the events. This is a different deal. This is a Pontiac. That was a Chevrolet. And they have spent all of their preparation for this event working on aerodynamics. This car may look terrific on the racetrack, but it's never going to win a car show deal because the whole front of it has been glued together, taped together, and welded together as recently as this morning, trying to get it aerodynamically right. Looks like they got it. To Mike Joy. Ned, uh, they're saying here that Mark Martin's car is just fine. He just got down on the low side and out of the draft. That's why that upper lane moved by him. Same cannot be said for Joe Nemechek. The outside pole sitter has blown up. He was six when it came apart, but behind the wall. Kyle Petty following right behind for Ricky Rudd. As they fight further back in the field, Kyle Petty trying to have himself any kind of a run today. It's a, a hard struggle for him. Buddy? Well, just in front of this group, Bill Elliott is making a great run toward the front. He was at 36 not long ago, all the way up to third now. He's making a charge toward the front. Showing Kyle Petty at 31st in the lap or two down at the present time. Followed with Ricky Rudd in the number five. Rudd trying to get that thing sorted out and get himself a, a run that'll get him back up here in front of the speed. For the moment, you have Rusty Wallace with the advantage. And look at Mark Martin <laughs> pour it on on the bottom. That's Elliott and Bobby Lamonti in one scoop. Almost. Bobby Labonte getting away from him right there. Well, what you're seeing there, the outside of the racetrack, when you move on the bottom side, it makes the car on the inside very, very loose, and it's hard to pass. So the car on the outside gets the momentum to run back down the straightaway a little bit faster than the car on the inside. You see Mark still fighting for that outside. Bobby Labonte went to the inside. He's going backwards now. Trying to nuzzle his way in there. He'll try it again down there. He gets him another run. <laughs> Coming up on Wallace. Well, he's down on the inside of Bill Elliott. Gets a nose alongside of Wallace. Wow, he got himself a run that time coming off turn four. He's going to lead this lap. Finishing lap 74. Yeah, they're even across. Now, watch what happens when they go down in one. That inside car is at a disadvantage down there. You see Bill Elliott fighting back on the outside. Well, one thing, buddy, that caused him to get a little loose, he, his line was taken away from him. He couldn't go as wide into the turn oh. or he as he needed to going into that turn. So he's going to have to do it all over again up here in three and four. Mark Martin says it's good to have friends. Bobby Labonte, you can see that he was coming up and this early in the race to give him racing run. And was lucky there because he didn't touch Mark coming out of the corner there. He got the wall for sure. Riding with Martin as he looks outside to look at Wallace. <laughs> wow. Looks like modifies out there for a minute. Scooting around out there. Elliot on the outside couple of Fords and look at Bill Elliott. Gee, does that look grand to see him up there fighting for first in this track. So much success here. So much frustration for Elliott in recent. But right now, he brings Martin with him. On the outside, Mark Martin going to second place and Wallace back to third. Outside is the place to be right now. It looks like it's the faster route, but Mark Martin's going to try it again on the inside. Up to third. If he's going to pass Bill Elliott, he's going to have to catch him coming out of the corner. Going into the corner, you really can't make a move. But uh, it seems that Mark Martin has the car. If he ever gets him lined up just right coming out of the corner, he'll get by Bill. But you got to remember something else about Bill Elliott. He's only won here seven times. <laughs> he knows every inch of this real estate. It's been so frustrating for me. Bill Elliott. He said one day you wake up and you got a driver. He certainly has His frustration may be ending here today. Look at this move by Martin as he comes up on Elliott. He dives to the bottom. Well, he gets a good run off ah. the turn. Can he sustain it down the straightaway? For the lead. Well, first place, still even across. There's Wallace right back in it. Elliott. Extending up on the outside around Chris of the lap car that's back on the track. And look at Earnhardt moving it on Craven. This is for Ford. Craven is there. Earnhardt in the number three. And Ernie Urban there knocking on the door in six spot. They're just now getting in line for one of the best races of the year. All these cars are extremely strong. The draft has so much to do with how you get around here. The Earnhardt really moving up. Here comes Ernie Urban up under him. 
we're going to have side-by-side -side racing before too long. They all had an opportunity buddy, during that caution period to make adjustments on their cars, and they're, they're getting them dialed in now and getting racing. And I'll tell you, that, that pit stop by Wallace was brilliant. He came on to pit road in 13. He came out leading. Give that to that pit crew, Robin Pemberton. Great move on pit road. Now take a look at number three, Earnhardt, plowing away at Ricky Craven for fourth spot. There's Earnhardt in the number three, and he definitely is edging ever closer to that number 25. He's got him in his sights. Can he pull the trigger? Elliott and Martin stay up there in first. Wallace in third. Craven in fourth. Earnhardt fifth. Bernie Urban sixth. And Bobby Labonte now seventh. And Jeff Gordon is into eighth with Mayfield ninth. John Andretti is back on pit road. John Andretti well back in 40. How about this? Outside. It's Earnhardt, the intimidator, rim riding right up around by the wall, and he's got himself a spot. Into fourth goes Earnhardt. Craven falls to fifth, and here comes Ernie Urban on the bottom. Ernie Urban coming after Craven. He has to back off a little bit. Now he gets that running start that Mark Martin has been getting coming off that turn down on the inside. And look at Bobby Labonte just behind Ernie Urban. They try to make it three wide here. No. Urban protecting that flank and staying right down on the bottom, not letting him through. But Craven is falling back, collected by Urban, and now the number 18 comes after him, Bobby Labonte. Bobby's brother, Terry, back in the garage. They're working on the number five to get him out here. And remember, it's a critical for Terry Labonte. He is tied with teammate Gordon for top spot coming into today's race. Needs to be out here gathering points. Frustrated and angry, does not want to talk to the press. He's out of his car while they continue to make repairs. The body's still trying to make the pass on Craven going into turn one. Down on the inside, he might have him this time. He does. He can slip up into that groove now and get his car set to come off turn two. I think Ricky Craven realized he was much quicker and let him go on that bottom side because that was not the place to make the pass with uh, Ricky right now. Out there again. Does not want to create a problem that's early. Craven falls to seventh. Bobby Labonte goes to six. Here is Mark Martin in it again in this battle for the lead. Elliott just barely edges through there. I tell you, that is some great racing. I tell you what these two guys are doing right now. You can study a guy in front of him. He has a, like the car is a little bit loose. You can actually tighten him up by moving down on the bottom side like Mark Martin's doing now. He'll fall back in behind him as they head down the straightaway. Someone has said that Mark Martin is like a pit bull. Once he gets his teeth in, he does not let go. And look at him up there with Bill Elliott in this great scrap. He's a tough little competitor. Rusty Wallace still running along in third in the car number two. Ward Burton just came out of the pits. Laffer to him. He's having a problem with way. way back. Showing 36. Joe Nemechek out of the race. This is Rob Cheney. Well, Joe's climbed out of the Bell South car. Joe, what happened? Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, something something broke in the motor of this Bell South Coors Light Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Uh, just, it's just kind of a frustrating day. You know, we had a great qualifying run. Uh, running up in the front, just trying to bide our time, and uh, something just broke inside. Uh, no warning whatsoever, but uh, hey, I got my favorite car. We're taking it to California. We're going to be ready. Kim? Okay. Joe Nemechek looking forward to next week, the way you got to run it. Look at this fight continue. Back and forth. Martin on the inside, Elliott on the outside. <laughs> Wallace ready to make it three wide. Oh, man. 95 laps this time, and there's Bill Elliott once again from 26 starting position today, now leading the Michigan 400. Mark Martin from sixth position, and Wallace, all three of them tucked in there together. What a great shot down the back straightaway. Great race in there. Just behind them, Dale Earnhardt now moving that because he and Ernie Irvin are, are drafting up on the front three. Here they come, trying to make it three wide again. Now Rusty tucks in behind Mark Martin. You don't know which one to follow as they come to the start finish line. It's going to be a drag race, and Mark Martin will leap that lap maybe by oh, eight inches. Maybe. 
Bill Elliott says, we started racing in Winston Cup. We had no idea what we were getting into. We were just a bunch of boys in the mountains of Georgia trying to make a race. and just said, please, Lord, let us in the field. Look at him now. It's a five-car race for the lead. A quick break and back with more of the action of the 29th running of the Michigan 400 on CBS. CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Budweiser, the classic American lager. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Budweiser, the classic American lager. After 87 of 200 laps have been completed, eight leaders, 16 lead changes, average speed at 144. Those were official lead changes. It's almost twice that as they dice around the track. But they collect them as they come across the line. A couple of cautions, 12 laps, and the car's out, that's building up early. Kenny Wallace, Mike Skinner, Steve Grissom, John Andretti, Terry Labonte, they're still working on his car to get it back, and Nemechek, and let's get more from Ralph Shaheen on Terry Labonte right now. Well, Terry, uh, tell me what happened out there, and can you get the car repaired enough to get back out and score some points? Well, we were I was going through the corner, and somebody had lost uh, part of a tire. It was sliding down the racetrack, and I saw it, and I couldn't miss it. And I hit it with the right front, and uh, it knocked the whole right front air dam off the car, and so I picked up a real bad push. Finally, I ran long enough and blew out the right front tire. I was hoping for a caution flag, but I sure didn't need to be the one, you know. I thought maybe we could get the car fixed. I didn't want to stay out until I went a lap down and stayed out too long. They will do everything they can to get this car back out there, even if it means just one lap. Get one point would be very important. Dick Bergen? Big trouble for Rusty Wallace. Flat right front tire. They're not sure exactly what went wrong. They think it just went down and then it cut the tire up as a result. The Mike Joy. Funny thing about that, Dick. Mark Barton, same problem. Right rear, a big cut here near the inside, or rather outside shoulder of this tire, brought Mark in. They could have changed all four. They guessed right zonally. That solved the problem. Wallace has gone a lap down. Rusty is being shown in 27th, a lap down. Martin is on the tail end of the lead lap. He's in 25th position. Your leader is Bill Elliott with Earnhardt second, Urban third, Bobby Labonte fourth, Ricky Craven fifth, Jeff Gordon in sixth, followed by Dale Jarrett, and then the injured Jeff Burton doing a great job in the 88 is up in the ninth. That Terry Labonte car has now been back in the garage area for 26 minutes. And Mr. Consistency out here, second, second, and third, the last three years, he is really suffering. A million dollars at stake for him at the end of the year, and he may just have lost it. It's going to be a big blow to 
this point situation. It's not going to put him out of the chase by uh -huh. any means, but uh, it's, uh, it's a big But this blow. could be the turnaround, the way Gordon is running right now. You know, I would have to speculate that Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace run over the same piece of metal out there because they were running right together, and both of them had flat tires on the same lap. Good point. Elliott in the 94 stays in first, and the fastest lap today still belongs to Musgrave, averaging 179.2. Call it 180 miles an hour on lap 17. And Craven did 179 average in lap two. That's really hauling the mail. Speaking of hauling the mail, the free car right now, Dale Earnhardt seems to be very, very quick. He's able to run the high groove. And if Ernie Irvin will stay with him, they'll catch Bill Elliott and really turn his thing into a show again. Elliott had moved out to about a 15 car length lead about five laps ago, but now you're right, buddy. Dale Earnhardt has moved back in. Ernie, right there, you see the four cars in the picture that run first, second, third, and fourth. Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, and Bobby Labonte in the green car. The armor plated. Dale Earnhardt stays right there in second place. And if you don't believe it, remember Talladega a year ago. Earnhardt just keeps on coming back. Here's Dick Bergman. Well, Bill A. Uh, running way up front here. Mike Beam is crew chief. Have you guys shut this thing up for gas mileage or just playing to run hard all day? Well, you know, like I told you this morning, we come to win the race. Yeah, we won't go worry about the fuel mileage. So, yeah, we come to race. We didn't come to steal the show. So, um, <laughs> luckily, you know, it's unfortunate the way the cautions have come out, but it's fortunate for us. Fuel mileage. We really good gas mileage, you know. So, uh, I feel like the end of the race, and he's been coming down to it, we'll be able to do it. And Tim Burton, Jeff Burton's wife, says she thinks he's going to be able to go all the way. She, you know, she should know about his condition better than anybody. Yeah, Kim has seen him beaten up before, but right now he is driving just a magnificent race. Jeff Burton injured yesterday. They thought he'd broken his shoulder, broken some ribs. They x-rayed him. He has a terrible contusion on his leg naturally from that awful wall up in the wall and he's out here 140 degree heat in that car just driving the wheels off it and look at the old grizzly bear Earnhardt right there four car lengths back from Elliott and he's zeroing in Ernie Irvin coming with him we're going to take a commercial break we're at lap 96 getting close to the halfway mark and it's a Winston Cup showdown at Michigan And Bobby took him. Yeah, but not for long. They'll think about it in the
coming to halfway with today's aerial shots being provided by the Bud One Airship, which reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. There she is as we come to halfway here in the Michigan 400. Bill Elliott, there you see his lead. Look who's come into second. Bobby Elliott, uh, uh, Bobby Labonte piled them three wide in the main straightaway to take that second spot. Ernie Urban's in there. Earnhardt's in there. Four, and look at this as they begin to snake that back straight away. Elliott trying to loosen them up, not let him get near. Pick up every little draft, bit of draft they can from whether it's a lap car or whatever. Elliott is the master. There he is around Wardford. The move by Bobby Lamonti was the move. He took two cars. He took Earnhardt and Ernie Urban and grabbed second spot away. Now they go back to single file. They try to draft their way to collect themselves on that leader. Two three cars together there. That can make the difference. As you can see right here, those three in single file are definitely moving in. That wake off that motorboat. Pretty impressive on the back stretch here. They cut through the air and close down on Bill Elliott. You can see when they get single file how they close in so quickly. When they run side by side, Bill Elliott pulls out 15, 18 car left. Now they're starting to really mend. Mike Joy. Ken Bobby Labonte has a little pre-race ritual that he and Donna do with their toddler age son, Tyler. They walk back to the car after driver introductions. They put Tyler in the driver's seat, and he starts driving like he's going to go win the race. There is usually a screaming fit when Bobby tries to pull him out of the car. He does not want to get out. He wants to be a racer, even at age two. Speaking of racers right now, Bobby Labonte has found an outside through very quick through one and two. Now you see in three and four here, he kind of holds his own. When he gets down to the far end down here, if he and Ernie Urban don't get running side by side, you will see how fast he is getting through that part of the corner. Going in this corner though, it takes the line off just a little bit of both cars getting in the corner and they'll slow down just a little bit. 16, 17 lead changes here in the first half of the race. That equals the lead changes a year ago in the whole event. And look at Bill Elliott stay in front. And that guy who won both races here in 1995, Bobby Labonte, is right back in the same group that he found so successful for Joe Gibbs two years ago. And you see the front four there. Remember, Craven is in fifth, Jeff Gordon is in sixth, Dale Jarrett in seventh, Jeff Burton in eighth, and Mayfield in ninth. Early Marlin is in tenth, and Musgrave, who led much of the early going, turned the fastest laps. He's back in eleventh. I'll tell you, Lake Speed is having a great day. He's up in twelfth spot. The Melling car, and of course, the Melling car won here forever. Uh, Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott. Elliot. Take a look. Challenge for the lead. Bobby tried that high group that time, Bobby. Just buddy, but it wouldn't quite work for him. I think Bill Elliott looked in the mirror and said, oh, if you can run up there, I certainly can. So he moved up a little bit himself. Oh, after the hard year of the 96 foot, wouldn't it be grand to see Bill Elliott have a great day here today? His seven of 31 races when he broke his left femur in that bad crash in Talladega. But he's back, and, and he was still the most popular driver again last year. Folks love Bill Elliott for good reason. Great racer, fine person. Hey, you know they're going to build a Hall of Fame down in Dawsonville, Georgia, Doctor? Really? Yeah, Dawson. I, you know, I thought the Hall of Fame was the Dawsonville Pool Hall. Yeah, it's yeah Gordon Perkle and the guy. No, they're really at it. Serious. Big bucks. I still like the pool hall. Hey, take a look at this back straight away. Lined up. It's a pretty good ways back to the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth place drivers can. There they are. There's the fifth place car of Craven. Here's Gordon coming up, catching him. He's come from pretty far back and has caught his teammate. Both of those cars owned by Hendrick Motorsports. There's Dale Jarrett coming into the picture. He has caught them also, and Jeff Burton following Jerry Burton there. So a battle for fifth. And Jeff Gordon going into fifth, and he started in 40 seconds. So that car is really working well. He now got good track position. A caution or two could really put him right in the middle of everything. And the teammate finished second at Daytona. Terry Labonte, over 30 minutes back there in the garage area, trying to get that one straightened around, get the number five back out another time. Looking back to Jeff Burton out of Dale Garrett's car. Jeff Burton running in eight, in seven is Dale Jarrett. 
And Burton has an in-car camera, so we'll look at his windshield. <laughs> as they pass uh, Ricky Craven. Let me comment on the right side of that windshield. They clean the left side. The driver's not looking for Ooh. quite as bad a windshield as we were just looking through in that in-car camera there. They sometimes don't clean the right side. Craven is the one backing up. Craven back to eighth now as Jeff Burton knocked him down. I think the chassis has gone away on his car right now. and he's, We're not far away from pit stops. Dick Trickle in 30th position has just pitted number 90. Elliott stays first. Bobby Labonte, who was trying that high side run that was so successful in 95, has moved to an inside line. Earnhardt coming into the pits. We said pit stops were not far away. Earnhardt was the first one before when they came in for green flag pit stop. Dale Jarrett coming down pit road as well. Lap 109 as these pit stops are taking place. Mike. The flying ace is over the wall as Mike Orr puts the car up in the air. Jerry Haley, David Rogers bring those right side tires around for Jimmy Elledge and Mark Armstrong to change. Danny Myers has the first can of gas in. Danny Lawrence brings the second. Left side tires in position to go on. No comment from Earnhardt as he stopped. Dale Jarrett also getting four and Earnhardt is away. Now Jarrett finishing his service and left side tires along there on the left side and now Jared is away as well. 21-8 as Earnhardt comes out. Here comes Gordon down pit road. Kyle Petty just making pit stop going out. Jeff Burt coming in. Jimmy Spencer coming in. These are scheduled pit stops. Green flag pit stops that we're seeing here right now. Dick Bertrand. And Jeff Gordon has come in. It's going to be a four-tire stop for Gordon. Mike Trower is at the front. Chad Knaus in the back. Mike Feldman on the gas. And Barry Muse is the jack band. They are all weekend warriors. They all came in on a plane this morning. This is their total job on this team. Change tires, put fuel in this car as fast as possible. Incredible. He is running this fast. Gordon has only got 25 laps of practice on that thing before the race started today. And Here's Gordon. It's number 24. Now look at these leaders as Lake Speed brings the number nine in, having a great run throughout the day thus far. Brett Bodine goes out, here comes Johnny Benson into the pits, Michael Waltrip, Jeff Bodine. Here's Terry Labonte, after 37 minutes plus, they're getting ready to fire him up, trying to keep him in that point battle. Johnny Benson has just pulled on pit road. Look at Bobby Labonte, up on the outside, trying to sweep through, and instead Elliott squeaked away. Here he comes, as Elliott gets ready to pit with him comes Ernie Irvin. New leader, Bobby Labonte. Michael Walter on pit road. These pit stops now taking place at, as they work lap 112. Ricky Craven coming in, so is Sterling Marlin and Ted Musgrave. All of these cars on the beat lap. Chad Little is in. Let's go to pits and Dick Burger. Well, this is going to be a really interesting story for Bill Elliott. On the left front, they put a piece of sheet metal to repair the damage that occurred earlier when they had that altercation at road. NASCAR is concerned about that piece of sheet metal, and they've asked those guys to adjust it. They pushed it in a little bit. Let's go to Mike Joy. Four tire change for Ernie Irvin. Joey Knuckles hands home the luck on the left front, and Irvin gets a good quick pit stop. He's out of here. 226 miles completed the 400 mile distances. Now Bobby Labonte comes on the pit road. He had taken over the lead, and Dick Bergren. Bobby Labonte in with that Pontiac front end very different than it's supposed to be or at least the way they came to the racetrack with it it's going to be at least a two tire stop it's going to be more tires for Bobby Labonte who is running ever so well here today everything going just fine on this pit stop Labonte about ready to take off out of here and join the crew he's gone 21 and a half seconds not a bad stop and how about Jeremy Mayfield now leading in the 29th running of the Michigan 400 Mayfield out of Owensboro, Kentucky, the young star from the same town that gave us Daryl Waltrip and the Green Brothers. There's Jeremy at work. Jeremy Mayfield with that Econolodge camera coming onto pit road. Got a brief lead picked up five points. And Derek Cope is going to appropriate first position. Cope is going to go to first, and it's going to bring Rick Wilson in that number 27 up in the second spot. Jeremy Mayfield back out another time. Now we've had Colt come in. Hey, this could give DW a chance to leave. Well, it could. Good. If his fuel will hold out long enough. Stops under green. 113 laps complete. Back after this word from your local station.
Five in the lead lap. Say that they right. Craven is reporting it. NASCAR's Craftsman Truck Series comes home to CBS Sports on Sunday, June the 29th, with the Napa Auto Care 200. Live flight to fly coverage from Nazareth, Pennsylvania begins at 1.30 Eastern. Well, we've had these green flag stops, and after some 40 minutes, 29 seconds on pit road, Terry Labonte back on the track, running 41st, some 55 laps down, tied for the lead in points as he entered race number 14 this afternoon. So after his problems here, tire cut down, slapped the wall hard, changed the whole right side of it. A 40 minute delay in his effort, he's back on the racetrack just trying to collect points. His main concern right now is just to ride and make laps and not cause a problem for other people out there. Back with the leaders, you have Mark Martin in front, and after all of these pit stops, I'll tell you how they're running. You have Martin up in front, Elliott in second, Urban in third, Earnhardt in fourth, and Bobby Labonte fifth with Gordon, just in that sixth spot. So there you have Mark Martin right there up in front, 25 cars in the lead lap. And Martin has about a seven and a half second lead. Now remember, he's off sequence. He made a, an unscheduled pit stop a while back. He pitted on lap 87, and we're now at a lap. They're running the 120th lap right now. So he still can go another 15 or so laps before he'll have to come in. There you see Darrell Waltrip. He's in 26 a lap now. He led Darrell led the race a few laps before he made his green flag pit stop. But when he made that stop, he did go a lap down. The 41 there, that's Steve Grissom. Yeah, and he's, he's back. He's, he's way back, 37 laps. He's a long time. And there you see the 29. And uh, what a story here. You've got this young Jeff Green that's taken over in this rig, and you're going to hear a lot more from him. Not a good day. Two laps down in 30th position. Here's John Andretti, and he is also well back. Yeah, he's 25 laps down. He was in the pits for repairs for a long time, being shown in 38th position. Rick Mass not having a good day. He's a couple of laps down, running in 31st. Next car we see is Bill Elliott. He's been our leader for several laps. Now in second spot, just behind Mark Martin. Actually, five. He's picked up a couple of seconds. He's only five back. There you see Bobby Hamilton in the number 43. And Hamilton is a couple of laps He's down. He's two laps down, being shown in 32nd position. You can see the 28 there of Ernie Irvin really getting high in the corner there. He's now running third. Ernie Irvin third, Mark Martin, Elliott first and second. And there's Earnhardt maintaining fourth. And Bobby Labonte right on his back bumper in the fifth position. Green car, Earnhardt in the black car. There's Labonte running that high line. Staying right there with Earnhardt. Next car in that lead lap would be Jeff Gordon. He and Dale Jarrett are having a battle there for sixth and seventh as they come to the start finish line. started on the point today. He was the fast car qualifying. Right, here's that 99 running in eighth, Jeff Burton. He may be hurt, but he's still hitting strong here at the present time. Great run for Jeff Burton in the exercise number 99. There's Sterling Marlin, number four car. Ninth position. Craven, 10th, 25. Kind of, and there you see many laps down. Terry Labonte, 55 laps down, a long time back after that altercation. I was hoping we were going to find Dave Marcus in there because he's written his own story this afternoon. Man. Yes, he has. He has run enough laps now to surpass Richard Petty as far as the record is concerned of the number of laps and miles run here at Michigan Speedway. Ted Musgrave, he led the early part of the race, but dropped back a little bit now. 11th position for him. And there's Wallace, who led earlier. He's being shown in 12th. But he's back on the lead lap. You know, he went a lap down when he made that unscheduled pit stop. As we see Jeff Bodine coming down the pit road very slowly. As a matter of fact, Jeff Bodine is going behind the wall and into the garage area. Jeff was uh, 
steal one of those cars. Yeah, 25th or 6th. Yeah. 26th as he came in. The 37 car here, that's Jeremy Mayfield. 13th position. Great run for Jeremy today. 21 seconds behind the leader. There's Billy Stanbridge, too. There's a name you're going to hear more of. He's, he's a three-lap down, three-lap deficit in 34th. And Jeremy Mayfield giving you those pictures. Johnny Benson, caution out. Got a yellow on the track. As we're taking you down, your summary of the field, Johnny Benson from Grand Rapids. Whole family here. His dad has won some 700 races and, and instrumental in his career. And that yellow Penzo car. Caution is out. Third one of the day. Break for Mark Martin. Wow. Break for him and Rusty Wallace. They were off sequence as far as pit stops were concerned. This is going to put them right back in the same sequence as everyone else. Martin all make pit stops. Martin leading, Elliott second, Irvin third, Earnhardt in fourth, Bobby Labonte fifth, Gordon is sixth, Dale Jarrett seventh, Jeff Burton eighth, Mark Martin and Ricky Craven make up the top ten. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in time. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in time. After 127 laps have been completed, 10 different leaders, 20 lead changes, average speed still down from the record of a 166 because of three caution periods for 15 laps. Cars out of the race and off the track here. Uh, Kenny Wallace, Skinner, Nemechek, and Bodine's the latest, and Jeff Bodine's problem have led to the third caution of the day as he oiled down the back straightaway, and they're having to take care of that right now, particularly going into turn three. Jeff Bodine losing an engine on number seven. Jeff Bodine has had a very rough year this year. He has run very well, but he's just had a lot of bad luck of one sort or another. Say, after the race, Stay on the fast track, CBS Sports Line. You'll find in-car video, special cover story featuring the top stars here, the Mark Martin, the Ernie Irvin, the Earnhardt story, Jeff Gordon. It's all coming up after the event on CBS Sports Line. Plus, the Sports Line newsroom will have a complete race wrap-up, all at cbs.sportsline.com. And then tonight on 60 Minutes, Dan Rather, one-on-one. -on -one with Timothy McVeigh's defense attorney, Steve Jones, plus what really went on behind the scenes at the Oklahoma City bombing trial. That's on 60 Minutes tonight, followed by Touch by an Angel and the CBS Sunday movie, The Man from Left Field with Burton Reynolds and Reba McIntyre. Let's get to uh, Mike Joy.
Again, they're taking a very careful look at the tires that came off Ricky Craven's car. He said he had a vibration at the end of the straightaway, so that's speed sensitive. They especially wanted to check these weights. They're regular garage weights on steel wheels, and they paint the tire where the weights go, so that if Ricky comes in and one is missing, they know that's the cause of the vibration. Uh, this is left front tire from set number seven, and they make other marks around it to denote circumference and also the air pressure that they've run, durometer reading, and there's a lot of code on this tire. But all four tires have all the weights in place. So if Craven still has a vibration, it's somewhere else, Ken. Well, there you see Ricky Craven trying to get this thing sorted out. Caution is still out. He's got his gloves off in there. We'll get more on the uh, story here from Ricky Craven shortly. Sorry, I got behind you on that card. I was trying to get back in some more stuff on dot com. Thank you. Welcome back to Michigan Speedway, 128 laps, 256 miles complete, packed capacity house here, 107,000 seats, all sold out, we're under caution, third of the day, after an oil down of the back straightaway. Hey, before the start of the 97 season, Robbie Gordon signed on with Felix Sabetis, and their first year together has had its ups and downs. Ralph Shaheen takes a look at their relationship. As the 1997 Winston Cup season began for Robbie Gordon, there was plenty of promise. By the fourth race of the year, the kid from California, with a heavy right foot and a gas tank full of courage, had won his first pole. Unfortunately, Memorial Day weekend was memorable for all the wrong reasons. A Charlotte Indy doubleheader brought only torn up race cars and painful burns, which as of yesterday, still had not healed enough to allow Robbie to return to the cockpit. I think if it was three inches higher up onto my thigh, it would be okay. But the problem is when you're in a Winston Cup car in the corner, it's actually right where you lean against the, the seat brace. Uh, with the G-forces that you get loaded in the corner with, this would be right up inside the seat. A turbulent May brought about rumors of a split between car owner Felix Sabanis and Gordon, and a question as to who had control of the steering wheel. Whenever the doctor releases him, he'd be back in the race car. I mean, he is the driver of the Coors Light car, and that's who the driver is. Sox is substituted for the time being, but I'm not going to let Robbie get in the car and get hurt. You know, Robbie would get in the car right now if I let him, but, you know, you, you can't let a, a driver that he's hurt get in the car and, and maybe ruin his career or, or hurt somebody else at it. Like any racer, Robbie still dreams of the Brickyard. The question is, which car will he race there? And I've told Robbie that you know, he got to make a decision what he wants to do. If he wants to drive an open-wheel car, hey, good luck to him. 
I'd like for him to stay here. I think he has a bright future in Winston Cup racing. You know, I, I've seen him do things with a race car as a rookie that not too many veterans can do. So he has a big future here, but if, if, if he's got Cart and Indy in his blood, then he should go do that. I'm just as committed when I signed up in the beginning of the year. When I signed up in the beginning of the year for Winston Cup racing, I always had the Indianapolis 500 tied into my contract, and nothing's changed. That was the same thing that I wanted to do all along. Felix Savet is looking on. He has one car left in this race in 20th position. Dahlen back. Nemechek is out. The 40 car didn't make the show today. Question is, will we see Robbie Gordon in California next Sunday? Well, Felix was quoted here this weekend as saying that he didn't think that Robbie would be ready to go next week, but uh, who knows? I can tell you, I've had a burn like that on myself. And the form fit seats that we have when you sit down in the seat, it, it hugs your leg so tightly that that looked very painful oh, yeah. just to look at. Much yeah, less yeah. to go out and put a lot of G-force in the corners on that particular leg. It looked bad. Now take take a look at Ricky Craven's seat. That'll give you some idea. Hey, we're just about ready to go back racing, folks, here. California, the rest of the uh, Michigan 400, and we have 130 laps complete. Let's get a quick message from Ralph Sheen. Well, Jeff Bonine is watching his QVC machine being loaded up into the hauler. What happened? Blew up, you know, just down the back straightaway. No warning. Wasn't running really good all day. Uh, we weren't bad, but it wasn't anything special. But no warning, it just broke going down the back straightaway. So don't really know what that is. It could be a lot of things, so I won't speculate. But uh, yeah, we're loading up, heading to California. Maybe there's a gold rush out there. Well, I'll, I'll get a pot of gold and change my luck. Ken? 70 laps to go. Let's see who gets this pot of gold. Musgrave is in first, Makefield in second. Strickland, the number eight, come up to third. Mark Martin in fourth. Bill Elliott fifth. Craven sixth. Jaron seventh. Ernie Urban is in eighth. Jeff Gordon ninth. And Bobby Labonte in tenth as they break away. And again, as at the outset of the race, Musgrave is the leader in that number 16. Boy, he has taken off, pulled away from him, too. I think he only changed two tires. So did Jeremy Mayfield, who is in second place with Strickland during this pit stop. But he gave great track position see Rick Mass number 75 in there. That's a lap down, and he's been fighting an ill-handling car ever since he got here on Friday. You can see Jeremy Mayfield in second, and we're looking at all the cars go down the front straightaway into turn one there. Jeremy Mayfield moved up into second. What a great run this young driver's having. And those pictures show you what a great track this is. There's not a bad seat in the house, and it's so competitive here, Ned. Well, we've seen two, three wide racing here in that wide racetrack. There's uh, Earnhardt and Gordon hooking up together back there. Daryl Walter is a lap down. And there's the front of 29, Jeff Green. You can see a lot of side-by-side -side racing here on this two-mile facility. That's a great shot as you look in there, but it doesn't capture the speed of about 180 miles per hour. For more on Earnhardt, here's Mike Joy. Yeah, let me tell you why he's restarted so deep in the field. He came in for a two-tire change. Midway through the pit stop, Larry McReynolds changed the call. He said, if we get four tires now, then with 25 laps to go, we just have to come in for right. The left sides will go all the way. They gave up track position for better position 50 laps from now. We'll see if it works. Oh, I think, that, Reynolds, yep, I think that's, a, that's a great call. We'll see. You're looking back at Earnhardt. He's taking an inside look as they head down to the corner there. You can see him trying to get by Jared on the bottom side there. Just in front of Jeff Gordon trying to side by side with Chad Little. Here they are, three wide. 134 laps, 268 of the 400 miles complete. And look at this stampede. There's Earnhardt down on the bottom, wending his way through. Oh, you would be great in sewing business. Go through the <laughs> eye of the needle like nothing else. Fastest lap of the day, Musgrave, laps 17 at 179.2 average. Those were all early laps of the race today. Well, as they continue to run, get more rubber and a little more grease, and the track heats up, then the speeds will slow down a little bit. Ned, there was some concern about Bill Elliott's car. You see the red car there just following uh, Mark Martin down the front straightaway. Uh, he had a pink machine up on the left front corner there. They beat it in a little bit. I guess some of the competitors were complaining it was sticking out a little too far. NASCAR was concerned also. 
Dick Burton. Yeah, the NASCAR was down here. They had some conversations with Mike Beam, and at first they came in with a sheet metal cutter. They thought they were going to have to cut that thing off. But apparently NASCAR has decided that pushing it in was just fine. And meanwhile, Elliott has radioed from the cockpit. This car is just great. This could be Bill Elliott's day. Strange piece of sheet metal or not, Ken. Well, yeah, but Musgrave right now, he could stop for life. He's got a hole one and four ten seconds between himself and the field. Biggest lead anybody's had. But the one thing he has, he has a disadvantage. All these other cars are drafting, and it plays a big, important part. They'll start to reel him in as they think about it and get after him. Coming around to complete 137 laps in the Michigan 400. With Ned Jarrett and Buddy Baker, I'm Ken Squire. Top side, Ralph Shaheen and Mike Joy in the pits. Hope you're enjoying your Father's Day. This great race, and let's not forget Dr. Dick Burton himself, Stock Car Magazine. The whole gang looking forward to a thrilling climax to this one. And it looks like with 23 cars still in the lead lap, gambler's choice. And here there are four wide open by the way, Jim Gordon is right in the middle of them. Look at that. <laughs> Going into turn one. Gordon would like to get out of there, but he can't. Now they ease down a little bit. Four. Inside Jarrett's number 88, back in 11th spot. What a beautiful shot that is. You're right with Dale Jarrett down the back straightaway. You see Earnhardt just under the 24 car there. You can see Gordon giving way as Dale puts him away. He's trying to get up under him down the front straightaway. Give us a driver's lap out there, buddy. Okay, we're looking down right now, down the front straightaway, right about there to start finishing line. We start down into turn one now. What Dale has to really worry about is that car on the outside. You can see Earnhardt getting a little bit loose, getting in the oh. corner. Rope oh. had to go high there. You get away. You see Dale Jarrett still making moves on Earnhardt as we head out of turn two. And down the back straightaway, Jarrett goes gets a better run on the outside. He closes that spot off. Here comes Jeff Gordon on the outside. That's from having to pinch that car from being on the bottom part. Down into turn three, you see him right in the middle of the racetrack. Back in the throttle right there, you start easing out towards the wall and back down the front straightaway using this slipstream. And what that is, the turbulence coming off these cars is actually a vacuum that pulls that car forward that's behind. How much do you lift going into one? Well, it depends. Right now, they're on fresh tires pretty much, so ease out just a little bit right here and right back in the throttle to pick it up and run it all the way to the next corner. Before you get to the apex, you're back in the throttle. Absolutely. If you're handling right, you don't stay out very long. As they go down that 2,200-foot backstretch, you just can't capture the speed, but imagine it's like headed down the interstate, but that's 180 miles an hour, folks. Look at Gordon underneath Derek Cole. In the number 36, way up on the high side of the racetrack. And back on the inside comes Jarrett. He's in 10th spot, the number 88, Dale Jarrett, the pole sitter. Derek Coleman, the 36, and Gordon, fight for 8th spot. You're riding with Jarrett. He's in that 10th spot. You can see him sawing that steering wheel. This is not a Sunday drive out here of any pleasure. You have to work that steering wheel to keep that car really hooked to the surface. And you're right on the edge. It's a 200-mile-an-hour tightrope into turn number one. All you got to do is turn it just that much more and you slap that wall backwards so quick, so hard. Musgrave looking for his first career win. Stays up in front. He has a lead now. Grim for only a second. It was 1.4. Forget it. It's now down to nine tenths of a second. Martin and Elliott are reeling in the leader along with Ernie Irvin. Yeah, they're hooked up in a three-car draft there that is helping them as long as they stay that way and don't try to start racing side by side. Looks like Elliott might have a... He's in the middle I think there. He, he wants to go, go Ned. Yeah, well, him there. That, the only friend you have is that back in, in uh, your hometown. So <laughs> nobody up there is going to give you a Musgrave trying for that first win. The only driver to ever secure his first win at Michigan. Dale Jarrett, August 1991. We're going to take a commercial break and be back with more of the action. They're closing Musgrave down. His lead diminishing. Can he hold it? We'll see.
145 laps, 290 of the 400 miles complete here in the 29th running of the Michigan 400. And the battle, Musgrave in front, his lead has evaporated. It's now just a half second between himself and Mark Martin in second, Bill Elliott third, Urban in fourth, Earnhardt fifth, and Gordon in sixth, Dale Jarrett seventh. You're riding Kyle Petty. He's a lap down of that Hot Wheels rig back there in the 26th position at the present time. Now to update you on the stories here today, Jeff Gordon very much in this event. He's running in sixth spot after starting a well back in the field. He wrecked his car yesterday, 9 o'clock in the morning, told him out. He's right back in here, still looking to win for the first time at Michigan. 0 for 8 on this track. Six times a winner this year but he has yet to win here at Michigan. Dave Marcus has surpassed Petty's mileage by install today. Of course, the fuel mileage story is still out. And Jeff Burton, wow, good, steady run. He led for three laps earlier today. He's injured, hurt in that crash with Jeff Gordon yesterday. But uh, at the present time, the 99 is in 12th spot. And look at this. It's tightening up for the lead. Mark here Martin has caught it. Let's go to Mike Joe. Jack Roush has worn out a pair of shoes today. He owns the front two cars, plus Jeff Burton's and Ken. I don't think you'll see a lot of racing between these two. Musgrave and Martin are teammates. If they link up, they might be able to drive away. Hey, hey, guys. Team rules. Would either of you pass a teammate? Huh? You, you have to remember one thing. The winner of the race takes his money to his house. <laughs> so that tells you about teammates. They want to meet each other, too. And you look just behind them there, Bill Elliott, coming in a hurry. These team cars right now need to work together. If Mark Martin is indeed the fastest car, they don't need to run side by side because they got company coming up behind them. Four, one through four, Musgrave, Martin, Elliott, and Irvin. And you've got Earnhardt back there with Gordon in fifth and sixth for the Chevy contingent. Mark Martin turns up the wick. Here he comes, looking to the inside. Batesville, Arkansas, as Mark Martin slams it down into one, eases up through two, and he's away into the lead. Explosive move by Mark Martin puts him into the front position. But look what it did. Just that pass in that corner, those two cars running side by side, third and fourth closed right up on them. Look at Bill Elliott there in third, and, and Ernie Irvin in fourth there. They have moved right on the uh, back bumper of the two lead cars. The move by Mark Martin into the lead was the 22nd lead change. That's the 22nd. That's the most in this event since there were 31 lead changes back in 91. Oh, here comes Elliott. Slides it right through. Must be that Musgrave's having trouble on the bottom. There. Well, uh, I think the fact that he only took on two tires during that pit stop, Ken, it might be beginning to hurt him a little bit now. Here comes Urban. Fourth third. Musgrave on the high side. Ernie Urban in the 28 down to the bottom. Just a digging. Comes up out of the hole in turn four and in the main straightaway. Even across. Urban's got him. Once you clear those front four, considerable distance. Back to Earnhardt, Jarrett, and Gordon. It's about five seconds. Jarrett just passed Gordon and now trying to pass Dale Earnhardt. There they are, about five seconds back from the leaders. There you see Jarrett in the 88, who sat on the pole today at 183 miles an hour. Mike Joy? Well, Ted Musgrave's car is fine. It's just, I think, uh, Ken, that this set of tires may be not matched up as well as the previous set. Uh, Ted has asked quite now, how long before we pit? <laughs> 25 laps. Uh, 152 is the lap complete. All three Roush cars have had an opportunity to be out in front here thus far today. And Mark Martin having just a dandy run at the present time stays in the lead. Mark has said, I used to wonder why Richard Petty said the only place he could relax was behind the wheel. Now I'm beginning to understand the only place you're alone is when you're in that race car. He's out in front right now. 
wonderful, lonely place to be. We'll continue after a message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Budweiser, the classic American lager, Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Mobile One 100% synthetic motor oil. Nothing out before. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Budweiser, the classic American lager. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Mobile One 100% synthetic motor oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Laps running out. 156 now complete. And we've got a new leader. Bill Elliott is there. Here's what happened to put him in the first place. Going into turn one here, and you see Mark Martin's going to go up a little bit, and Bill Elliott just drives right under him, coming off turn two and drives away. 86 miles to go here in the Michigan 400. 86 to finish it up. You've got a new leader in Bill Elliott, and he sure knows how to win this race. He won it in 84, 85, 86, and 89. And the second place now is the 28 car, Bernie Irvin. He seems to be a match for Bill Elliott. You can see him going through the corner there. He's taking a little wider line through the corner, but seems to have great momentum down the straightaway. Behind this quartet, however, Dale Jarrett is somewhat breaking away from Earnhardt and Gordon, and he's picking up time. He was better than five, two tenths back. Now he's 4.5 back as he tries to close in on that front group of Elliott, Irvin, Martin, and Musgrave riding with that quality care car right now. You see how much distance he's built up over the cars of Earnhardt and Gordon. Battle for second. That's Urban and Martin at it again. And we're watching the Fords go by up in front. After Ken Musgrave gave up the lead to Ken, he dropped back to fourth, but he's been able to hang right with them there. I'm seeing something pretty interesting, too. The first five cars are all four. So I wouldn't be surprised if you don't hear a little song if they finish <laughs> that way. Of course, when he won those races here, he was driving for Harry Melling, local fella from this part of the country. That added to his popularity up here in this part of the world. And right now, Bill Elliott working on that win. Such a frustrating period for him, but so many people relate to him. Look at Earnhardt and Gordon now. Gordon just passed Earnhardt going into turn two, now trying to take it back away. That's for the sixth position, and he's got it. Now watch Earnhardt Gordon try to come back on the inside. He got up beside Earnhardt the last time, coming off <laughs> turn four. He's going to try it again. Gordon back in seventh. Just behind him, Derek Cope is in eight. Great run for Derek Cope today. Bobby the body back at night. Jerry, oh, excuse me. Yeah. 
bump out there. Talk about the bump and run. That's at 180. Here Here they go Irvin. at it again. Yeah. Look at this up in front. Here comes Ernie Irvin on the outside. You try to get the lead from Bill Elliott. You see Bill fighting back on the outside. This is going to get interesting as they head down the straightaway. Mark's trying to decide, who am I going with? He goes with Irvin. This is up all of that 73 feet up there in that banking. Hmm. What a great race. Ernie Irvin back in front. Now Elliott on the outside going to try him again. Around turn two. Oh boy, Bill Elliott's car is a rocket ship coming off the turn. You can see Ernie, he's right now just kind of regrouping. But look just behind there. Dale Jerry is on the move. The 88 is definitely closing on these four. He has really trimmed it up now. He was better five and a half seconds down. Now they show him his four, and I think this time you're going to see it go under that. Bill Elliott leads this time by, looking for that first win since Darlington, 1994. A mammoth that's reached 76 races for Bill Elliott could be over today. But Ernie Irvin, he's down on the inside. He's got his own scores to settle. Ernie Irvin, particularly with this track, this track that nearly cost him his life. It cost him a year in recuperation, battling for the lead. Down to the inside goes Ernie Irvin, and the California driver is back in front. He's right up in front of him that time, buddy. Yeah, he had enough momentum getting into the corner, and when he got up just enough to get by Bill Elliott, he went right over, and now they're... You can see him down the front straightaway now. You see him move to the inside, drafting. Looks like a Congo line coming down through there. Everybody following each other. Right now. And Jarrett is still the fastest thing out here. Now it's three and seven tenths of a second. Back to Jarrett in fifth, closing on these four leaders as they continue to dice it up in the front. Irvin and Elliott and Martin and Musgrave, the front four. Jarrett just outside. Earnhardt and Gordon having their own scores to settle further back among those Chevys. And right now, Earnhardt has the advantage on Gordon by about a car length. They've switched that position back and forth several times. Here is Dale Jarrett bringing that quality care forward around. And this time, let's see if he's going to close any more time. Indeed, he does. Getting down to three and a half between himself and those front four. There you see the quartet that lead it. Ernie Irvin, 11 different leader of the Michigan 400 this afternoon. The record at Michigan 15 back in 1982. We'll take a commercial break and get back with the action here in the Michigan 400. Stay with us on CBS. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco. Celebrate.
This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco, celebrating 10 years of racing excellence with Robert Yates Racing. After 167 laps, 334 miles, 11 liters, 24 lead changes, average speed 149.7, three caution periods, and the cars that have retired from the battle today, Kenny Wallace, Mike Skinner, Nemechek, and Jeff Bodine, everybody else of the 43 starters, still out here struggling on this beautiful two-mile facility, sold out for months, and what a show they're seeing as Ernie Urban comes across to complete lap 169, and that means there's just 62 miles to go, and they should be pitting in about five laps. You have Urban in front, Elliott second, Mark Martin third, Musgrave in fourth, and Jarrett continuing to close in fifth. Earnhardt is six, fourth and seven, Coke is eight. And for more on the pits and the pit strategy, as we get close to that final fuel stop, let's go to Mike Joy. Ken, the pit window will open in three laps at lap 172. And this is critical, and a lot of it's based on the prior pit stop. Who will get four tires? Jeremy Mayfield has to. Who will get two tires? That's Earnhardt's plan. Who will gamble and get gas only? We'll see. Ralph? Well, Mike, it looks like Ricky Craven is going to be coming down pit road now. As far as Ted Musgrave is concerned, they're going to hold out to lap 180 before they bring him down. Whether or not he takes four tires or two, they're not sure. Andy Graves and his crew are waiting for Raven as he makes his way down pit road now. He is on his way to us. They will take four tires and a fuel, full fuel load. Dick Bergman? Bill Elliott's crew is still trying to decide what they're going to do. At first, Mike Bean pointed two fingers up in the air, suggesting two tires. Then he waved his hand. He's really not sure. They're still discussing what they're going to do, but they can go to Ralph. Let's go back to Ralph. Oh, Dick, they had a horrible pit stop here with Ricky Craven. He came in blazing down pit road, overshot the pit stall. They knocked crew members down on the right side. They're just getting around to the left side now and getting the fuel into the car. This is going to be a costly pit stop for Ricky Craven. They cost him at least three extra seconds. Yeah, 25 seconds there, and he had the number one pit. He was all the way on the bottom end of pit road. Big mistake for the Craven team. Here's that battle continuing between Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. This time Gordon tries to take the measure of Earnhardt going into turn three, and he does it. Let's see if he slides up the racetrack. You know what Earnhardt's doing? He's coming in the pit. It looks like he's way down on the racetrack. I would just keep yep. coming in as I speak. You're exactly right, buddy. From sixth spot, Dale Earnhardt. Twice a winner here in this 400. He eases on the pit road. He's had a brilliant day thus far. Mike Joy. Can't remember last pit stop. They took on four tires and gave up track position so that this time they could do it with just two. Larry McReynolds would not discuss the tire stop on the radio. He said, watch for my hand signal. So Earnhardt hits well out away from the wall in case they want to get four tires. The right sides are on. I don't see any left side tires up on the wall. It is just a two-tire change. Earnhardt's away. 11.1. Earnhardt back underway. Great stop. You can see a little gash there on the right front corner of the valence on the uh, front of Earnhardt's car. Hopefully it won't create a push in the car because the air will get up under there and make the front end try to lift. Leaders. Urban. Elegant. Martin. Lap 173, Wallace is on pit road. The number two car, Rusty Wallace, defending champion, running 18. Traveled at 166 miles an hour to set the 400-mile record. Now in the pits, and here comes Mark Martin in. The third-place car is pitting. That'll move Musgrave up into third, and Jarrett into fourth. Oh, Jarrett's coming into the pits. Here's Jarrett on pit road, indeed. Well, let's see if they'll take two like Earnhardt did. Gordon's coming in as well. Bobby Labonte, Gary Cope. All of those drivers have been back in fourth position. Mike Strickland makes his way on pit road. He's a lap down in 22nd. Mike? Mark Martin will get only two tires, Ken. Uh, he's going to get the right side. They are through with the gas. He is down. He is ready to go. Here, Dale Jarrett, his right side as well. Quick clean of the grill. Nick Bergeron. And it is surprisingly, Jeff Gordon took just two tires. He has been complaining the car has been pushing. Worst it's been all day. We expected to see him take four. He took two. Bill Elliott's crew is getting ready. He will be in soon. Ernie Urban's coming in right now, Dick. Mike Joy. 
Ernie Irvin comes in, and they were discussing on the radio with Mark Reno. He said, well, we could get two. He said, maybe we could get away with none. They've decided for two. It's going to be right side tires for Mark Reno's crew and Ernie Irvin. Car up in the air, one can of gas already in. Right side left on hammered home. Ernie's down and away. Well, Rusty Wallace come in the pits, went right out, went one lap around, come back into the pits. Wallace back underway, took a second pit stop, 50 miles to go. Here's Dick Bergman. And Bill Elliott is on Pim Road right now. He's got a ways to go, but not too terribly far. He has stretched the fuel mileage and is among the last of the leaders to pit. Elliott now coming down. Joker Rooney is going to be on the front. Gerald Shires is on the rear. The Jackman is Rodney Rhodes. It is unlikely that this is going to be anything like a lengthy stop. It's a two-tire change for Elliott. He's having trouble getting it going. That last tiny bit of gas cost him. Hit. Jeremy Mayfield. I am. Just getting in. And Rusty Wallace coming down pit road one more time. Is he getting uh, maybe black flag for going too fast on pit road? Going out of pit road, apparently, was he's going too fast. That's costing Rusty. Wow, that's the second one if it is. I guess he didn't like it, went out, and they said, well, we didn't like what you did again, so come back in again. It was a stop and go. Terry Labonte, many laps down, just in behind him. Here's Mike. Let's go back to Mike Joy on Fifth Road. Ken, we're trying to find out what has happened to Rusty Wallace with these multiple pit stops. Too fast on pit road is the word from the NASCAR official. A black bag penalty, uh, that'll take him out of the chase. Sure does. Guess who's in front? There's Wallace out of this race. But this man, very much in it. Can he hold on to win his first ever Winston Cup event? Ted Musgrave now in command. Ralph Shaheen. Well, Ken, they're really on the radio down here. Gordon Ruff trying to decide what to do to Musgrave's car. James Inns, the crew chief, has been on the radio with Ted every time by. They're trying to decide how much of a lead they can get by taking no tires. They might try to just get gas and go all the way. They're scheduled to come in within two laps. Let's see. It may be right now. He's in. Here's the key moment for Musgrave. No tires. Just a drop of fuel and on his way with 48 Come miles on, to go. Here, Come on. Come on. Get all you can get. Back to Ralph Shaheen. Let's go. They're Here waiting we are. in the pit we'll stall. Here he Close comes. To the wall. Here we are. Let's get him right here. Ted Musgrave brings the number 16 to a stop. They go for fuel. They will not change tires. Gas man holding the fuel. Let's go. Let's go hard. Go hard, man. Go one, hard. Run as hard as you can. One tank full. Of one tank full. He's on his way, just one can going into the car. Six and four tenths seconds for a tank of fuel. Okay, here goes Ernie Irvin. He's going to pass him as he comes off the of turn two as Musgrave gets his speed up. Ernie, when all the pit stops are made, is going to take the lead, and I think he just did as they come off the of turn two and head down the back stretch. Ernie's going to have a pretty good lead over the 16 car of Ted Musgrave. The next car in line would be the 94 of Bill Elliott. He's not too far behind Musgrave. So we're through that final pit stop period. We'll reset the field when we return.
Today's aerial shots are being provided by the But One Airship, which reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. And the shots that that But One is getting right now is a Bernie Irvin in front, and then the battle further back in second, Elliott with Musgrave. As they do the tighten up, and here comes a little traffic problem for the okay, leader, Ernie the, Irvin. With Ernie Irvin getting down in the corner there, he got a lot of traffic. You see how Strickland at the eight there. Ernie is handling anywhere he wants to go. Looks like right now he, he can do anything on the race track he wants to. Let me tell you, Bill Elliott is coming with a head of steam now in second place. 41 flat, later on at 49. Elliot around Musgrave, closing down on Ernie Irving. That was the spotter or the crew chief of Ted Musgrave that we heard say he's running about a tenth of a second slower than Ernie Irving. You see Ernie Irving up there in front. Elliot trying to close in on him. Ernie Irving has said, I've got to get more than this. I, I feel I'm a good race driver when I'm aggressive, but that's such a fine line. Just got to walk the bottom edge of the line instead of the top edge of the line. Here's Urban, ever closer to winning the track that bit him and bit him so bad back here in 1994. Still running 49. You can hear his driver telling him every lap what he's doing. That was the 16 car that ran the 49. Oh, 40, Ernie yeah. ran a 46 and right. 5. You know, you have to remember Ernie Urban had no in his grasp. And going into turn one, he hit all and turned around. He's had several runs that he could have won this year, and all of a sudden he got in trouble. So if he wins, he certainly earned it because this car has been dominant most of the day today. It's been the quickest car out there on several occasions. The 91 winner of the Daytona 500, Ernie Irvin, that much closer across another lap. What's that 186 complete now of the 200 to be run? Will it be his? Can Elliott close him down? Almost three seconds now. Yep. Musgrave back there in third. Martin is in fourth. Jarrett deployed fifth. And perched in sixth is Gordon, followed by Earnhardt in seventh. Derek Cole is in eighth. Bobby Labonte ninth. And Jeff Burton, what a story on Jeff Burton. He's in the top ten. Jeff Burton hurt yesterday, taken from this track to the hospital. They thought he'd broken shoulder, broken some ribs. X-rays were negative. He comes back out here today, and Jeff Burton has driven just a magnificent race to stay right up in the hunt in the top ten. It's Father's Day battle. Johnny Benson's 11th. Lake Speed is at 12th, and Jeremy Mayfield 13th, as you see. Ricky Rudd 14th, Jimmy Spencer 15th, Michael Walter 16th, Sterling Marlin 17th, 18th is Ricky Craven. That's a Kim looking on. Watching that guy in 28. Nursed him back to health after that horrible crash, given a 10% chance of life after his crash here in 1994 and Urban's out to get revenge. He doesn't look great right now. And in 96, he walked away from a terrible crash to Charlotte in the 500. He suffered a concussion. Right back at it again. His last win was at Richmond, Virginia last September. Had two wins in 1996. Yeah, beat some guy named Jared up there in New Hampshire. <laughs> that was his first win after yeah. his comeback. That was no gimme. There you see Robert Yates looking on. Oh, man. Sweating. <laughs> you can see. He, 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 he's concerned about something. Mike Joy. He's in conversation with the crew. Robert, you and Ernie both told me yesterday, you need to get to a point. Just telling Ernie it's 10 laps to go next time by. You told me yesterday you need to get to a point where you have a car that's a consistent winner for Ernie. You had a winning potential car at Dover. Looks like you got a good one here today. Yeah, you know, we're pretty gun-shot at Dale, so we get these 10 laps. Uh, a lot of decisions would have to be made to get a caution right now. Uh, just hope we don't get a caution. Hope we don't get brakes. Hope we don't slip on them by all. I think they found what they're looking for, Ken. Yeah, they don't want any slip, any oil here. He is increasing his lead. Yep. Pulled it out to better than three and three tenths right now. Robert Yates going for his fourth win at Michigan. He had two with the late Davy Allison. One with Dale Jarrett. Can it go that distance? Can it go? 
Ernie Irvin who crashed so hard head on here in turn number two, better than 180 miles an hour in practice back in 94. 10% chance of making it through it. And here he is having just a great day. Mark Martin has caught Ted Musgrave for the third position as we watch Ernie come up on traffic. It's Wally Dahlenbach who is running in the 20th position. 20 cars are on the lead lap. And there's that battle for third. Take a look at Musgrave and Martin back here. That's for third. Elliott's in second. This is for position. Number 16, Musgrave. Number 6, Martin. And here you see that Hot Wheels number 44, Kyle Petty's car, about to be lapped once again, running in 27th position. Schrader going down the lap right there. He's in 28. You can see Kyle Petty, he probably, the uh, guy up here probably called him on the radio, said the leader's coming up, give him plenty of room. You see Kyle Petty, good sportsmanship, moving down to the bottom of the racetrack, and he goes right by on the outside. Jeff Gordon is back there in six. Looks like he's going to be 0 for 9 at Michigan. He's won six times this year, but this one doesn't work for him. There'll be a shakeup in the point standings. Terry Labonte had problems. He just took his car back to the garage. He, running any more laps would not help him any, so he just took it back to the garage. Terry Labonte, 57 laps down, cut a tire, slapped the wall, was in for almost, what, 45 minutes. He was tied with Jeff Bodine coming into today's 14th race as they prepare to head to California and a brand new two-mile track built very similar to this Michigan facility. You know, this is why they say it's never over until it's over. You see Ernie Irvin there, he's going by lap traffic right now, and when he goes to that high side, you hope they know he's out there. Yep, and he's around up there in that turn too, where it almost completely stopped for him, weaving his way through traffic. If he returned, would it be fair to Kim? Kim probably answered that better than anyone. She said, this is his life. I am happy with his life, and I want to see him do what makes him happy. Well, you can see Kim really nervous there. Believe it or not, the women are much more nervous than the guys out there doing their job. They're, they're doing everything they can to win the race, but these people are the ones that really get their nerves pulled on. 1993, Ernie Irvin replaced Davy Allison in that Texaco Haviland and Robert Yates T-Bird when Davy Allison was killed at Talladega. Take a look here, fifth and sixth, Jeff Gordon up on the outside of the pole sitter, Jarrett, by him, that's for fifth. They're catching the Ted Musgrave car. Race side by side back there, they won't have much of a chance of catching, but I don't believe they're going to be side by side when they come over that turn. Gordon's got the advantage on the high side, pulls away. Sure looks like it's over. Mars Gordon's concerned today. The 0 for 9 as he goes to August. Six wins, but not one year. Ernie Urban going for career win number 15. He has never won at Michigan. In second to Earnhardt, 1990. Laps away, five to go. Four, I believe, four there. to go this time by. Ernie Irvin settles in. I don't think anybody ever showed more class than in Talladega, 1991, when he got up and apologized to the entire driving group of the drivers. Here driving over my head. I've been too aggressive at times. I've lost the respect for some of you and the car owners, and that really hurts me, and I'm going to be more patient. Gosh, he's been patient today, but he's been on the hammer when he needed to be. i got to tell you something. He's not patient. Yeah. He's running that car for everything is worth every lap. But he is just drawing away from Bill Elliott. But right he now. has conquered that over-aggressiveness that at one time he was faulted for. This is a beautiful run by Ernie Irvin. And look at Bill Elliott here in second spot. My, they're going to be proud of him down in Georgia tonight. Three laps to go. Ernie Irvin is on his way. Can he hold on to it for three? Win his first race at Michigan? 
Interval is three and six tenths of a second to Elliott in second spot. Martin lies in third. Musgrave is fourth. Jeff Gordon has clambered back all the way at the rear. Crashed yesterday, if you're just joining us in practice, destroyed his car for this race. Had to take a backup car from the rear of the field. He's back to fifth. Dale Jarrett in sixth, who set of the pole at 183 miles an hour. Derek Cope, former Daytona champion. He's up to seventh, and Earnhardt relegated to eighth. Bobby Labonte, the 95 winner, is back there in ninth. And Jeff Burton, boy, if you give him a special award for bravery and guts, you give it to Jeff Burton today, driving hurt and driving well. I would say Robert Gates has told him, you've got it right now. Don't do anything to get this race away. You see him with Ricky Craven there. He wrapped it up on him on the back straightaway. Yeah, I tell you what, if he's holding anything back, he's doing a good job of it because he's putting Craven a lot down and he takes the right away. 18th place car, Ricky Craven goes one lap down. His wife Kim looks on. He's willing to let him go. Very smart. Very smart. Final lap. The number 28 stays in first. 3.5 seconds back to Bill Elliott. And for Ernie Irvin, a guy who gave everything nearly, just about everything, 10% chance of living after that crash in 94 right here in turn two. Here he comes around, headed for checkers. Ernie Irvin is finally going to win the track that nearly did him in. Ernie Irvin for the checkered flag, and he's won the Michigan 400. That's a great win. Boy, it's, it's good to see. Bill Elliott for second, Mark Martin for third. Bill Elliott. Ah, he's stomping again and looking great. Mark Martin in third, Musgrave is fourth, Gordon is fifth. Dale Jarrett's going to settle for sixth. How about that performance? by Ernie Irvin. We'll take a commercial break and be back to meet the champion in the Michigan 400, the seventh different winner this year. Jeff Burton has run out of gas. He fell four positions in the last lap. Yes, he fell from 10th to 14th in the last time. Yes, sir. with you at Michigan Speedway. Ernie Irvin about to clamber out of his car after his sensational victory today. August 20th, 1994. The hardest battle he ever fought. The fight for survival after that crash in turn two at this track. And today, this race belongs to him. Here's Mike Joe. 
Ernie Irvin climbs out of his Robert Yates Thunderbird. Ernie, this track nearly took your life. Today you took something back from it, a big win. Pretty emotional. Started about 10 laps to go, started getting tears in my eyes. I tell you, it's, it's great. Only in America, you know what I mean? Um, this Texaco Havlin Ford race team, all the sponsors are, are unbelievable. And this, this is the best place to do it. This is Ford Motor Company. You know, this is their, their home base in Detroit. And, uh, it's great. A lot of people maybe had written you off after the crash. After this year went along here without a win. People were saying he's moving on. He might not be here. And you told me yesterday, what you've got to do is win consistently. You took a big step today. Well, I mean, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, it's a lot easier to get sponsors to, to r rally behind you when you win. And, um, you know, we've been real close this year, but it's just a matter of um, some bad luck. And, um, you know, we, the only way we can um, get good luck is just keep, keep preparing ourselves and uh, be able to uh, get good race cars every day. You said Happy Father's Day to your dad coming around. Kim Irvin, how big a day is this for the Irvin family? <laughs> It'd be more exciting if Jordan was here, but uh, she's um, probably watching on TV. Hi, Jordan. And, um, you know, I wish you were here, but uh, we'll see her tonight. Okay, Robert Yates with Ernie Irvin and family in Victory Lane. We'll be back to Michigan International Speedway to celebrate further after this. He just needs to walk. We'll be able to pick you up where we're going. Rough time is the one we're coming down, Lance. A minute and a half we're coming down, Bill. Yes. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Goodyear. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Goodyear, number one in tires. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. And by Econo Lodge. Spend a night, not a fortune, at Econo Lodge. Let's meet the man who came in second today with Dick Berger. What a great run Bill Elliott had. Best run here since 1989. You almost got him. Well, at McDonald's Ford ran well. This, that, that gummit is just one of them days. I mean, I'm tickled to death for Ernie. He ran good all day long, and I knew he was going to be one of the cars to beat. He was awful strong. You know, and even though he was back, I never did really race him there until we got close to the end. You know, he was racing along with them other guys, and, you know, he was a little bit better, but the way it shook out there, you know, when he got ahead, he was just hard to beat. Man, my car got just a little bit tight, but, man, these guys have worked hard, and, you know, with everybody that's been involved with this deal, I'm just taking a little bit of a wrap. 
And he should be because last year he missed this race out with a broken leg. What a difference a year makes. Ken? Okay, Bill Elliott in for second. Let's take a look at the uh, final results. Ernie Irvin won from 20th spot today. That's the furthest back anyone's come in the 400. Only one man, Harry Gant, came from further back in the August race in 24th. There you see Jarrett back there in the sixth position. Uh, there was a big change just at the end. Uh, we had Jeff Burton in 10th. 100 yards from the finish line, he ran out of fuel, fell to 14th. Jeremy Mayfield moving up in there. Lake Speed had a great run today. But all of these 18 cars were on the lead lap. Craven almost went a lap down there at the end, but he hung on. And these cars now that we're seeing are drivers uh, were one lap down. Or more as we get further back in here now. Chad Little qualified 23rd, finished 25th on the afternoon. Rusty Wallace had his problems and ended up well back before it was over. He had some unscheduled pit stops, and so did all of these drivers that we're seeing right here. You see Terry Labonte, who was tied for the points. He finished his way down, 39th place. And Jeff Gordon leads the uh, points by 46 over Mark Martin now. Terry Labonte falling to third, 109 behind. And Ernie Urban jumped from 18th to 13th today in that point battle here in the Michigan 400. Wow, what a thrilling, spectacular day of motorsports we've had for you on CBS as we have Ernie Irvin still being celebrated in victory lane. So, for Ned Jarrett, Buddy Baker, Mike Joy, Dick Berggren, and Ralph Shaheen, Ken Squire saying so long from the Michigan Speedway, where Ernie Irvin has won the 1997 Michigan 400. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the Daytona 500. Good job. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. I move those lights back uh, out of the way. The sun's in the right spot. I don't think we need lights. All right. Your job now should be to see if there's any cold drinks up here. I'll get you some. Want Pepsi? Anything. All right. I can't find water, but I know where there's Pepsi. Got a, fin a finish sheet. We'll do a we'll do a two minute piece. Can we get one? We got about three or four minutes. Sure, if you want to. Okay. Anything you want to do, we're all set. All right. Uh, what do we need to do here? Get some highlights for us. How many, uh, would you get for the lead changes? 20, 27 among 11.
speed? What was the average speed? They don't know what three. One five three 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 eight. Okay. No. Ah. Boy, nobody's leaving. We'll be all right. What a great show. One, two, three. Right, would you just hold this for me for a second, buddy, sure. in case you give me one? Oh, I've got everything now. You want to finish order? I, I just wrote one down. I, I think I've got it. Can you hold on to that? Sure. Just in case. We had uh, 27 lead changes among 11 drivers in three caution areas. My Skinner was the first. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. I heard you. I heard you. Sir Kenley. Beep, beep, riding the car. 